introducing first, speaking out of Akron, Ohio, representing Team Popping the Boys, the headline god, Jeremy Lambert, and his co-host, speaking out of Atlanta, Georgia, representing more than one royal family, the king of indie viewing, Stephen Jensen. And this is the Spotlight on Fightful. So, what do you want to talk about? Oh, man, everyone, wait, people, everyone trickle in, trickle in, everybody. Today's a very big day for the spotlight for Steven Jensen. We have double victory laps coming, everybody. Preview for the show today. Really? Um, Our... oh, oh, we do. Oh, we do. We have plenty to talk about, everyone. One we'll of those victory to... laps might and, be cut short. And we're, we're, we're going to get to everything. Um, we're going to get to everything on today's show. Obviously, there is one thing that is very, very important that happened over the weekend. And we will heavily, heavily highlight that, spotlight that on today's show. Um, before we get into all that, Jeremy, how you doing, man? Before we, uh, you know, start talking about this big wrestling weekend we had, I'm good. I, I'm I'm tired. It was a big wrestling weekend. I worked a lot, but I'm good. How are, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing fantastic. People asking about the blonde hair tattoo already and all that stuff, guys. It's coming. I can't. I don't think I could do the blonde hair because of the because of the new role. I've got to like make some appearances. I don't think I can do the blonde hair this year. I will be getting the tattoo though. Don't you worry about that. That is coming very soon. Um. So. That story will be finished soon enough. Um, but what's more important, of course, is what actually happened this weekend, everybody. Um, I don't even know where to start. I mean, I mean let's... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Team me up, Jeremy. Well, let's, let's start at the end of WrestleMania 40. Cody finally did it. He finished the story. He defeated Roman Reigns. He is the new undisputed WWE Universal World Heavyweight Champion. All thanks to Triple H. <laughs> right? That's so, that's that's the takeaway from all this. He, he did the big interview. He's like, uh, come thank thank you to Bruce Prichard and Triple H. Thanks, guys. Couldn't have done this without you. That was my big takeaway from the weekend. Triple H is the the face of the WWE. Well, listen, I do want to give Triple H Paul Triple H Levesque, as they are calling him now on screen. I I really uh I do want to, you know, thank him if he ever happens to come across this video uh, for, you know, going through with all of this. As I've mentioned many times before, I strongly believe that Cody was going to win the title last year at WrestleMania. And I strongly believe that the Endeavor slash TKO merger and all that stuff that put a uh, that put a kibosh on it, I think, because the new owners came in. They're like, Roman works. We like Roman. Like, we're buying this thing. Like, don't change anything until, you know. We really like, sink our teeth into what's going on here. And now we're a year into that. And they clearly have that trust in Cody. They, I mean, and listen, for Cody to accomplish what he accomplished, I'm going to first start off by giving Roman Reigns credit. Roman had an incredible title run. I know that he didn't defend the title as often as people wanted, but it, it's still the fact that the guy held the title for as long as he did for 1,316 days or whatever it was like be, because of Roman being that guy and that champion and that base of the company. And also after all those years of being shoved down our throats of the baby face push, not working year after year, WrestleMania main event after WrestleMania main event, I was live in the crowd in some of those, like I was live for like undertaker versus Roman reigns and stuff like that. And just like, it felt pretty flat. You know, the, the thing that just wasn't working for Roman as a baby face and it's a huge credit to him and the WWE for where he has gotten as the top heel in the company. And there's a lot of meat left on the bone for whenever he returns. There's a lot of ways it can go with this stuff between him, The Rock, Cody, the bloodline, and all that kind of stuff. So, like, very good on Roman. And congratulations also to Paul Heyman for going into the, the WWE Hall of Fame. That was one of the best speeches I've ever heard in my life. I love Paul Heyman, always have. So I want to give a lot of credit to Roman Reigns for, like, elevating everything with the bloodline story with the title to the point where like people were so invested even if you weren't a cody rhodes fan you were still invested as a wwe fan and i, I would imagine because it's like who's eventually going to be roman like it's such it was such a big deal whoever was going to finally get that w so 
all credit in the world to Roman Reigns you know, on his on his championship run. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he does whenever he's back. That said, oh, let's get a let's get a super chat up here real quick. That's huge. Um, I'll pull this one on the screen. Chi Town Spurs, congrats on finishing the story statement. Thank you. Yeah, that's huge. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate I appreciate that that I have finished my story, uh, watching Cody finish his story. And thank you, Chi Town Spurs, for being a loyal viewer of this show. I know you're always in here supporting the show. So Man, I still almost can't believe it. I've watched the the main event of WrestleMania at least ten times, like all the way through. I've watched clips so many times. I've watched the the entrances. Um, let's start off on night one real quick. So night one, <clears throat> the main event. I thought that was done really well, um, and I thought The Rock looked really good. Uh, so I thought like the tag match set up night two really well. And I was totally fine with the outcome. We, we basically predicted that outcome. I even put that outcome in my Wrestle Rumble prediction. I had The Rock pinning Cody Rhodes in the main event of, of night one. Um, and once that happened, I was like, okay, if Cody wins on night two, they've got a built-in match there. Rock and Rock and Cody one-on-one -on -one eventually for that title, which they've already started setting up on Monday, of course. We had a lot to cover, obviously, because there's a lot that's happened in the last week with this. Um so night night two, I thought went really, really well for everybody involved. Um I loved the uh the rock or the, the, I loved Cody hitting the rock bottom through the announce table and then Roman hitting the spear through the barricade like right after, and how that all kind of set everything up at the end. So Bloodline Rules Night Two, it played out basically how we all expected. The only difference, and I know everyone's talking about it, and I agree with everyone, we all wanted to hear the glass shatter. Instead of the Undertaker gong, I get it. Now the crowd did go insane for the Undertaker. Like we got. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I like I wanted the glass shatter. I think it would have been a bigger moment if the glass shattered. I know a lot of people have mentioned how the Undertaker makes sense for the story, and he does. You know, um, he's he's more synonymous with WrestleMania than Steve Austin is. He's had the most WrestleMania matches ever. <clears throat> I was had the streak. <clears throat> apologies and you know Heyman led Brock to ending the streak uh and and Roman who, who was now with Heyman the only the other person to defeat Undertaker at Wrestlemania and he's been yeah. feuding with that family dating back to to Yokozuna so right there's plenty of history with Undertaker to where it made sense for him to be in that spot Austin just would have been the, the bigger pop yeah i i mean i and i agree with all of that you know what i mean but like you said undertaker does have enough of a tie in mm -hmm. to everything going on here and he's also one of the few people who's like high enough status in that company's history that he can come out and like take out the final boss in one move you know what i mean like not anyone can just come out and take out the rock after everything the rock's been doing and after pinning cody Rhodes in night one and stuff like it, it needed to be a big name needed to come out and take out uh take out the rock now once again steve austin would have been best case scenario. I don't know why he didn't appear or didn't want to appear or whatever happened with that. Um, but listen, still pretty damn awesome how things played out. Um, and we saw it once again, we played out how we expected, you know, a bloodline member runs in, someone else, you know, stops them. Co Cody and friends, the super best friends, as I keep calling them. They, that is, you know, I got, the only other thing I guess is like there's I guess more family members that we could have seen, but like how does Rikishi actually look doing something like this? You know what I mean? How is was it, is it the best move to debut Jacob Pachu in this position? You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of what ifs as far as like that kind of stuff, I guess. But the way that they did it, I thought was really smart with how Jimmy comes out, Jay fights him off. Um Solo comes out, Cena fights him off. They have history, and the place went nuts for Cena. So, like, that was awesome. Cena puts Solo to the announce table. He attitude adjustments Roman. I know we both said that we didn't want to see anybody touch Roman in that match, yeah. but Solo touched Cody. You know what I mean? Like, Solo got Cody, Cena got Roman, kind of so kind of evened out as far as like I was concerned there. <laughs> and then Cena hits that attitude adjustment onto Solo and on that announce table. The Rock's music hits. The place goes insane. They have that perfect shot of like Cena's face, you know, looking at the crowd. Like you see his face as the Rock's coming behind him, like on the entrance ramp. Awesome stuff. 
the and then so the rock takes out see the scene that goes for the you can't see me the rock takes him out with one rock bottom the shield music hits i've heard all these people like oh man i can't believe ambrose wasn't there it's like i mean they can't really expect listen i know i i i hyped up the idea of mjf appearing at this and that didn't happen i, I get that but like even I was like, I mean, I was like, that'd be really cool if Ambrose showed up, right? That would have been sick. But like, I don't get my hopes up like that. But, you know, Rollins music hits. He comes out with the blonde hair with the the shield regalia on. And the only thing about this initially that I didn't like was that Seth came out and just got murked. But then like, when you look at how the story plays out and everything built into it, then it actually makes sense. And it's really good storytelling how it played out. So he gets Superman punched before he can even do anything, leaves a chair in the ring. And um, that leads to the undertaker coming out, choke slamming uh, the rock and the way that the rock lands. I noticed this cause I had to rewatch it to double check. The rock literally landed and and like he, he put the belt down that with like the mama Rhodes sitting up like he did that on the fall like he didn't like fall and that thing like flew all over the place and someone like set it up when the lights went out the rock somehow fell and as he fell he sat that thing up exactly how they needed to for the shot because then the next thing we see is the lights go out the lights come back on the weight belts there the mama Rhodes belt the steel chair is there right next to it set up perfectly and roman has the decision to make is he gonna finish the finish the job and just take out cody and just end this once and for all or is he going to let his ego and the revenge and all these things from like 12 years ago with the shield that he has a flashback to that sees rollins trying to crawl and decides i'm going to take my shot and get my revenge that i've I've been waiting 12 years for this on rollins and lets that get in the way that's the little bit of time that cody needs to recover so he hits seth seth winds up being cody's shield which is exactly what he was talking about literally literally came out with the shield music looking like a member of the shield and came out and just took a murking from the bloodline didn't get one offensive anything in in this scenario just got beat up for cody was his shield and then that leads it to where cody was able to uh, you know kick roman on the way in from a spear three crossroads one two three and uh yeah so this was great because so night one i watched with some friends night two i watched by myself which i've did intentionally because I didn't I didn't want I didn't know how I was gonna react whenever this case actually the, happened. Yeah, and in case they lose, you wanna you wanna be alone. In, when case. I was standing in the same exact spot I was standing last year when Cody lost. I mean the same exact spot in my living room. I mean complete flashback. I mean when solo comes out and, and Samoan spikes John Cena, I expected that moment to happen. Like I expected him to at least attempt it to a callback from last year. But when it happened, I was like, no, 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 no. You know, I'm just like, this is, it's all, I'm being unzipped. It's all coming back to me. Um, but man, when he actually won, I mean, I'll admit it. There's any people in here who make fun of me in the chat. I was bawling. Like I was like, I, people wanted me to take videos of myself. And I was like, I can't, I can't do that. Like it's too, this is too personal. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I just can't believe it actually happened and it happened to the right guy and the way that they coordinated him at the end of that show, like not only did John Cena and the rock come out to help him and pass the torch. I mean, sorry, uh, John Cena and uh, the undertaker came out to, to help him pass the torch and the rock too. I mean, this is a, as a, as an enemy, but also, you know, so it's one of those things where like, not only did he get put over in the match by all the, all the right people, we would have liked to see stone cold. I get it, but like, it is what it is. Um, and then in the ring afterwards, it's like Cena and, and Jay and Sammy and Kevin and LA Knights out there. Um, which Cody himself even kind of mentioned in the press conference. He was like, LA Knight was there. I don't know. <laughs> cool. Like that was cool to see him, you know, but I mean, the idea being like LA Knight was one of the guys that got screwed over by the bloodline. There was a lot of people in that ring that like, you know, Randy Orton was out there. who's not only been screwed by the bloodline, but also as a mentor to Cody throughout his career. There's, there's like all these people in the ring it was just it was just awesome seeing cody up on everyone's shoulders and his family's in their teals in there michelle mama Rhodes is in there um it would have been nice to see dustin but once again that's also that is what it is um it was just cool seeing their family and everyone in there and, and cody actually got to hand the belt to his mom just like you know i was hoping you know so 
it was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was super emotional. It was a great moment. Um, and like they've and, and with him calling out, I know people didn't want to hear, you know, Pritchard get called out. I get that. But like, it was nice to see Triple H come out and kind of get his flowers too a little bit. He got his flowers massively during the Hall of Fame, the way that Heyman put him over. But I like the, this, this team mentality that the WWE seems to have right now, where they're really seeming to band together as a locker room and under new leadership. And everyone's really all in, you know, they're really all in on kind of like, what's going on right now in their own company. And I think it's just super, super refreshing. And for Cody to be the guy that they've chosen to head them into the the future going forward, like as their guys, like it's what I've wanted. I've known, I've, I met the guy 22 years ago. I, I knew this day was coming eventually, but it, I didn't know. I was, I didn't know. didn't want it to take two decades, but it, uh, it's, uh, it's incredible now that it's actually happened. We got some super chats. I'm going to, pull these up dial for film because i can't stick around congrats to cody and also to you steven i started working or i started watching you when roman won the title now your boy has dethroned him hey Watch awesome. a while. roman's been the champion was the champion forever thank you for that her her says thank you to jeremy and steven for the wrestle rumble entry lots of fun there you go wrestle rumble shout out to them oh I yeah love working with them matt's a great dude um yeah, Russell Rumble is great. I did like he threw in uh, who's going to show up for the main event. He had the Eminem uh, entry in there that you could pick. Yeah. Well, Marshall Mathers was going to show off. Uh, Kim Gray sends this one just says for Jensen. Thank you, Thank Kim. You, Kim. We appreciate I'm you. I'm also a big time Cody fan. I, I see your tweets. Um, and I'm sorry it took me so long to follow you back as well. Um, I, I There's some people on Twitter that like, I interact with so often that I don't even realize like who I'm following and who I'm not half the time. And then I'll be like, I've known this person for years or like, I've liked this person for a long time. And like, I'll be like, Oh, I don't even follow back. I feel like a jerk. So Kim, I'm, I'm very glad you had that moment too. She got to actually meet Cody really recently, I believe with her kids. So uh, yeah, the, uh, the Memphis, I know she was at the Memphis show uh, with the rock, the big rock concert. And so I think that was it. I know she went to that show. So that I, that's why I would assume that was the show. Yeah. Um, and JJ says, hello to my favorite big star, King of the Indies, Shinsen, happy for you. Like I've rewatched the night two main event so many times. I rewatched the shield music hundreds <laughs> of times. Much love. Yeah. People thought it was Ambrose. I thought for a second, like it, the longer it went on, I was like, what is happening? Where, where is Seth right now? And then he finally came out and got hit, but you know, it yeah. made sense in the context of the story. It did. Um, hey, Cody's the, the champion. I could have lived without the, let's bring out Bruce Pritchard and triple H. That was unnecessary to me. Like both of them, honestly. Bruce it was nice to see Triple H and Cody shake hands though in the middle of the ring after everything that's happened, after all these years, after the throne and everything. Like it, it was a cool visual for that show to kind of end with Triple H and Cody like embracing. Yeah, was it was it? for me. Yeah, it was for sure. I <laughs> Bruce Pritchard. I get. I understand people not wanting to see Bruce Pritchard. Okay, I I get that, but like I have no like, especially like WrestleMania is over. Like it's not like. This cut into anything. This is like but then they did, just did it. They did it again the next night anyway. Triple H and Cody embraced in the middle. Like it was a little bit too much Triple H for me over the weekend. Maybe because I consume wrestling different than yeah, you had a to lot write like three hundred articles or whatever. I mean, you're yeah. like burned out. Regardless, I just I'm like, seeing this from totally different lens. You know what I mean? I, I'm just like watching it as a fan, right? But I just let Cody do his big celebration. Let him have that moment. I didn't even need him really to talk to get on the mic. Cause all he said anyway was here's triple H and Bruce Pritchard. He's going to talk in the press conference. I would have just preferred to just have a celebration on there. I didn't need that. Cause again, they were doing triple H and Cody the next night. Like they were, they were just, they were celebrating then, but uh, I get it. Like, if you're happy with it, that's that's truly what I I'm care about. super happy with it. I mean, outside of the, I, I'm like everyone else. I didn't need to see Bruce Pritchard given the circumstances i get that <laughs> but with triple h i'm okay with him getting his flowers and dude if that guy can ever i mean because you know ne- you can never say never in wrestling especially with all the technology nah, he's and, he dude, said he said that it's probably not happening man i mean edge said for like nine years he like wasn't interested in yeah, ever edge, coming back <clears throat> and doing acting and you know christian thought he was done and Daniel edge had a neck thing christian all these are this man has a pacemaker in his heart 
Jensen. Like he had, it's a way different scenario, way different. Yeah. But it's not comparable to anything, really. It's not yeah, comparable. So you're dealing with someone's heart. I, I, you're, you're. That's that's fair. I'm just, I know, I'm just throwing it out there into the world. You know, that would be cool if we ever actually got anything like that. Even if to see Triple H punch Cody in the nose one time, like it was part of the story. Like just, you know, I don't know, like, but. It's cool to see the two of them in the spot that they're in now. Like things really worked out for for the best for for Cody. Like after for people who don't know, I won't go through like the entire story here, but like just so because I know we probably got like you know some new viewers here and stuff today. Um, like I've been watching pro wrestling since I was like six years old. I was born in 1988, same year as you, right, Jeremy? Were you 88? Yeah. So. I mean, I, I started watching in 1994, which was it. Was, I was specifically remember the storyline that that dry, that that like hooked me in pro wrestling was Hulk Hogan versus the Taskmaster Kevin Sullivan in WCW. One of the worst stories like ever universally, but I was six, so I thought it was incredible. Um, and I just, I, I Randy Savage was my first favorite wrestler, and I just, I just really, really got really drawn to it and became a fan. And I've, I've never watched it ever since. I never had one of those periods where, like, I like got out of it in high school or got out of it in college or got out of it, like, you know, after like when I was out in the real world. I always had pro wrestling. And one of the reasons why wrestling was so important to me was because my mom was sick with breast cancer when I was growing up, and I like had. <laughs> Monday Nitro and W and, uh, and WWF Raw and like these kind of shows were like an escape for me. Like I know they are for so many people that watch wrestling and like that watch these types of shows and stuff. You know, we're all in the same boat in a lot of us. Like where you just want something to escape from reality. And I've I've always had that for professional wrestling. So I, I've always wanted wrestling and I've wanted I've wanted all these companies to succeed because I wanted to be there for other kids that are you know growing up and need it, you know, and that's why I think someone like John Cena is so important doing all the make a wishes. And that's why Cody's so awesome for wanting to be that next guy to do that for, for this next generation of kids and stuff. Super, super important to me. And when I was in high school, right before high school, my mom passed away and I joined the high school wrestling team just because I needed to like, I honestly just needed to like blow off steam. I didn't know how to deal with what had just happened. She passed away the summer going into high school. So like, that's a tough time for a lot of people just in general. And then for me, it was just, it was just super tough. So I joined the wrestling team. I wound up, I actually got my Letterman jacket right here for last of wrestling. I wound up being, um, I wound up being on the same wrestling team as Cody Rhodes, you know, Cody Runnels. Um, he was a junior. I was a freshman and I got to watch him win two state championships at last of high school right there and i got to see dusty right there in the crowd i i saw diamond dallas page the steiner bros would be there sometimes and stuff and it was just like surreal because i was such a huge professional wrestling fan and the son of dusty Rhodes is like my hero like as like a kid i was like the guy's two years older than me and i was like this guy me and my friends would literally sit there on the wrestling mats watching this guy and be like he's gonna be the wwf champion because it was still the wwf when i met him we would be like the wwf champion one day you know like this is this is the coolest thing ever that we're getting to even just like know this guy exists, you know? And he, we've all, we, I've just been, I've been literally a fan of him since I've, I've, I've met him and watched his high, watched his high school wrestling career, watched his, uh, you know, followed him, knew, knew that he was, you know, doing the acting in California. Um, he was, he was really friendly with some of like the teachers at the school, as far as like they kept in touch with him after he left. So he would kind of relay to the teachers what he was doing in California. And then he'd kind of tell all of us like Cody's doing this or that. Cause he was such a big deal. He was like a celebrity in like our area at our own school at a super young age. They were writing about him in the, the uh, Atlanta journal constitution or Marietta, um, well, all those Atlanta based magazine or, um, newspapers, they would, they would write about Cody. So anyway, Followed, I, I, I was in college watching his OVW career. Like I'd go on OVW.com and like see like that he was teaming with Sean Spears and he became the OVW Grand Slam champion, won all of their title belts. And then he gets called up to, to Raw like super, super fast. And me and my friends would gather in, our, in my dorm room in college and we would watch Cody on Raw and watch him versus Randy Orton and all this stuff. I watched this, I watched this guy all the way through. Let's see how this Stardust thing. I was one of the only Stardust fans in the world. I got Stardust mask behind me right now. I was one of the only. There's some. There's some other Stardust, Stardust fans out there too that I that I respect. But like, you know, it's one of those things where like, I, and then the dude eventually quits the WWE. 
He quits on May 22nd, 2016. Guess when my birthday is, Jeremy? May 22nd. Dude quits on my, so I'll never forget that. This is insane. Just so people, just so you don't know, this is no BS. My my mother passed on my birthday on May 22nd, 2002. Cody Rhodes quits the WWE, May 22nd, 2016. These are like the dates is just so strange how this kind of, it's like I'm living in a simulation when I see the, this kind of stuff happening to me and around me. So the guy quits and I'm going, okay, what now? Like the guy was never on the indies. How's this going to even look? Are the fans going to reject him out there? Like, where's he going to work? Is he going to do the indies? Is, is he going to go back to acting? Is he going to go into politics? He saw, he said he wanted to retire at like 35. Like, you know, he's been in the WWE for like over 10 years. Like what's next? And the dude goes out there and it completely revolutionizes the entire sport, it does incredible things on the indies in New Japan and Ring of Honor and Impact, so on and so forth. You name it, he did it. Wins the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, becomes a founder of All Elite Wrestling after doing All In. All In only happens because of the people involved. And a lot of that had to do with Cody responding to a Dave Meltzer tweet and they off to the races. His sister Teal came up with the name All In, by the way. So... All this happens, Cody goes to AEW, and I think that's going to be it. Like, and I'm totally content with that. I love Cody. I love AEW. I'm good with this being the rest of his career. And when he leaves, I can't believe it. When he appears against Seth Rollins, I still can't believe it. And now he has actually done what he's accomplished. When he quit the WWE in 2016, it's because they, they just didn't see him as that guy. He had to go off and reinvent himself and come back, and he is that guy now. So I have, uh, I have followed this story, uh, probably more closely than anybody as far as like for him specifically. And I, uh, I am super, super, super proud. And I just think it's incredible. I was watching this guy practice professional wrestling in a high school gym back in like 2004, 2005, his dad would bring in a wrestling ring. I was seeing Cody running the ropes when he was in high school. I saw him doing moonsaults off the ropes when he was in high school. He was doing the, the Ric Flair, like the knee drop with like the little roll thing on people in high school. Like I, I knew this day was coming. I was hoping it wouldn't take 22 years, but it makes it that much sweeter that he did it. And he did it against a guy like Roman Reigns, like this, this historic title run for him to be the guy. And he's the guy going forward. I mean, what more can I say? Like that's, the dude is legitimately one of my heroes, and I, I and I and he's a guy we can all legitimately get behind and be proud of as as a champion of this company. And he's a guy you don't have to worry about all this BS that you have to worry about with other people. You don't have to worry about him making your company look bad. You don't have to worry about him getting in scandals. You don't have to worry about any of this BS. Like Cody is a reliable guy. He's a good human being. He has a good family. He's 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 the guy. So I'm very very happy for Cody Rhodes. Well, I think. <clears throat> The only thing you have to say, Jensen, is thank you to Triple H for making all of that happen. Because without him, none of that would have happened. He would have never left WWE because Triple H should not see him as that guy. He would have never smashed the throne because of all of those things. He would have never founded AEW. He would have never returned. And he definitely would have never won on Sunday if it wasn't for Triple H. So I think you need to thank Triple H. Well, I do. I do thank Triple H for that. I honestly do. I think that, you know, I'm making sure you're giving the right guy credit here. We need to make sure Triple H gets credit for everything. Well, he, I mean, he definitely deserves credit for going through with this because it, it's it, as, as easy of a decision as it seems for someone like me to give the ball to Cody. It, it's still even the biggest Cody Rhodes fan in the world can admit like, it's still like you had a proven commodity that was working in Roman Reigns. You know what I mean? And I'm also a big person. That's like a big, if it's not broke, don't fix it type of person, you know? And like they had something that worked and I, it, it could, it was possible. Triple H could have just been like, man, let's just keep rolling with this. We got this other world title on raw and stuff. Like we, like we just, let's just keep this going. You know, let's, let's go, let's go past, Backloom, let's go past you know Bruno. Like you'll just do it. They and they they could have. Um, now it's all about you know how long is Cody gonna hold this thing and how fast do they do him in the rock because that's clearly what's being set up next. But I, but when we'll talk about that, but I I just yeah, I I I absolutely I don't know if you're trolling or not when you say that, but like I leg, I legitimately Never. do think Triple H for going through with this because I mean Vince didn't or the people before didn't. 
I, I'm again, I'm making sure we're giving proper credit to Triple H. That's all. Yeah. I don't troll. Well, by the way, way, everybody, I don't have, I, I took off work today. So, like, we don't have a time limit on anything. So, if you guys have like Cody for the next five hours, <laughs> well, we're not going to, we, I won't do that to you guys. But um, if you guys have super chats or like anything you guys want to say, or, you know, we'll, we'll make sure to address it because we got time. But, um, yeah, I mean, and everybody then, leave a thank you, Triple H, in the chat. Make sure the right guy gets credit for Cody winning. It was not hey. Cody. It was not his hard work. It was it was not because they, Roman was failing or anything like that. It's not because the crowd chanted, we want Cody. It's not because The Rock decided to come back and be a heel. It's all because of what Triple H decided. So everybody make sure to start a thank you, Triple H, chant in the chat. Hey, I'm good with that. You guys want to do some thank you, Triple H's? I'm I'm right there with you. I'm 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 excited for this new era of WWE. I'm excited for everything going on in wrestling. I think this was the best for, for me personally. This was the best week in the history of wrestling. I I love this week. Um, thanks so, to Triple H. Tri yeah, Triple lot. H. Yes, everyone's very excited. Trip for the new era with Triple H. Yeah, Paul Levesque is his name. Did you know that? Yeah, Paul Triple H Levesque very aware um it was good to see stephanie also it was cool seeing her in the uh the ecw hat i like that i like that little touch a little throwback even though like the whole alliance thing was very underwhelming unfortunately it's the triple but, h era that's what we're calling this jensen the triple h okay. era i'm good with that the triple the triple h era um they yeah they the whole era named that. after him unlike you know in the past it was you know based on what we saw on screen it was based on the the style and the presentation this era is based on just one man one man who brought it all to like he brought this style wrestling i don't know if wrestling really existed before triple h honestly it was sports well, entertainment right now pro wrestling is back thanks to triple h this kind of style back thanks to triple h yeah paul Heyman even said it in his uh hall of fame speech he was like sports professional wrestling that's right all they're, thanks they're, to triple h they're cutting yeah. it out um and also we didn't i didn't mention i don't think but it was uh, it was really cool to see brandy out there with cody um because you know whether right or wrong you know the aw fan base was not kind to her on the way out and like well, the wrestling audience in general what i said they were wrong well, I uh, listen, I don't think that Brandy is like the best in-ring wrestler, you know, and stuff like that. But like, I don't think she deserved the level of hate that she got by any stretch of the <laughs> imagination. Um, Brandy you know. rules. No, I love her. Obviously, I love her on a, you know, personally. Like, you know, I, I think Brandy's awesome. And I know she did a lot of stuff for people behind the scenes. Like, I'll, I won't pull the curtain back too much. But, like, you know, Jesse Davin, one of my good friends, she's dealt with all this medical stuff. And I, I'm back when... Like it, it, during when they were with AEW, like they would send her like really nice messages and like send her like a care basket to the hospital and stuff. I mean, I don't know if J Jesse put that out there before or not, but like I just wanted you guys to know, like I think that Brandy is a, a great human being. Um, and she didn't get a it just said, I mean, similar to Cody. I mean, he got booed out of his own company at the end of the day. Like the way that they were treated, I'm obviously not a fan of. Um, so to see her kind of get her flowers also was really nice. Like her to get this big pop when she showed up and Cody had the mask on that was similar to like when Triple H and Stephanie did the same type of entrance, like the skull helmet thing. That's right. So, Tribute to Triple H, the inventor yeah. of pro wrestling. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the, 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 the kind of funny thing about what you're saying about that though, is like, there is going to be a ton of stuff that's going to get like written out of the WWE's history, like because of a lot of, stuff that's happened a lot of the performers and stuff so there is to do a degree you're kind of right about that um that triple h invented pro wrestling well no they invented pro wrestling but the, like this era of wrestling they're gonna really highlight what's going on like like it's hard it's hard to explain you know you know what i'm saying though like there's stuff that if you were to go on even on like youtube right now if you went on and watched the rock versus uh if you saw the rock come out during the the cody and um during the Cody and Roman match, like if you watch that, well, actually here's the, here's a better example. 
sorry. If you watch YouTube videos of like the WWE marathons that they run, where they run like, you know, a whole bunch of matches all day on their YouTube channel, they'll edit like chair shots to the head and stuff where like it'll freeze. So you like, you don't see it and stuff like that, which like I'm okay with. I understand it's like for safety reasons and stuff. There's a lot of kids watching YouTube, but like, just like the idea of that to me is like, you can go back and you can change a lot about history. Like, you know, you can, in, in, I guess the, re the reason I say that is because, like, there's like for instance, that example, like Vince, you're not gonna probably going forward, you're not gonna hear that name, right? Like for obvious reasons, and you shouldn't. The guy, I mean, see ya. You know, I'm fine with him not being talked about, but be also because of that, they're probably like throughout wrestling history, you're probably not gonna hear much or anything about you know Austin versus McMahon. You're not gonna hear about a lot of this kind of stuff if Brock continues to be persona non grata, like the streak, you know, being beat. Like, there's a lot of stuff in, in like wrestling history that like yeah, Brock was, was like, cut out of that Paul Heyman video package. Yeah. And, and it was, that was an interesting thing because Triple H kind of addressed that or about him like being like Brock being Brock, but like that isn't just Brock being Brock when like he's getting, like he got edited out of the video game out of 2K24 and stuff. Like that's not just like him being Brock. Like there's way more to that for sure. So that's, that's my, my, well, so my Triple H is, Triple H uh, has been very busy inventing wrestling, so he's not read the lawsuit yet. So I, I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, my point, I think my point's pretty obvious is that obviously Triple H didn't invent professional wrestling, but like they're, they kind of have like a fresh sure? start with this era. Are you sure he didn't invent wrestling? Felt like he kind of invented wrestling this week. Like all these new ideas, all these ideas we mm. saw, we've never seen before. It was completely fresh, completely new. Brock's at home, by the way. When he was asked about Brock, Brock's just at home. Nothing's changed. Brock's being Brock. He's not implicated in any type of lawsuit. Again, Triple H, as of January, you know, it's been a few months, but he's been very busy these past few months. But as of January, not read the lawsuit. Maybe he's read it. Maybe he's had a little bit of time. He's also, but Triple H, again, very busy inventing pro wrestling, coming up with the greatest WrestleMania ever. Did you know that this was the greatest WrestleMania ever? It was definitely the greatest ending to a WrestleMania ever. I think that's like almost undisputable. Yeah, I know. Triple H standing tall at the end. It was fantastic. Triple H, Triple H, Triple H. All right. Chat on Spurs says, I do feel bad for Brandy, but I was there for her last appearance in AEW in Chicago. And she did call us Cleveland. Oh, that's mean. It's the meanest thing anybody mm -hmm. said to anybody. That warrants that, being booed. Fair. It does warrant being booed if you say the wrong town. Like that's that's very fair. But it was it was nice to see because like I don't I'm not necessarily like, necessarily like against Brandy being a part of like Cody Rhodes presentation like more regularly on the show and stuff. I wouldn't have a problem with that. But like you know, it was really cool even if it was just like a one off that she got to just like have her but kind of have her own WrestleMania moment finally. People forget or may not even know depending on how, like when you started watching wrestling. Like Brandy was a ring announcer for the WWE. They what her name was like Eden Eden Styles, I believe. Eden Styles it was. And then they yeah. they I think they had to change her last name whenever AJ came in. And uh if I remember correctly. But she also wasn't there very long after AJ was there, I don't think. Anyway, she was like the ECW announcer, right? Or what or one of those, maybe not ECW, it might not have been around yet. Still. She was she was one of like she was the comment, she was the announcer for like whatever the the like C level show was at the time. And then maybe did a little on like SmackDown or something, but she really, really wasn't used much on the show. And then Cody and her filmed some like promo stuff when he was still stardust, but like, like it was like Rhodes enterprises or something like that. They were going to try to like pitch to creative. So like they tried to do this thing with Brandy and Cody and Brandy, I guess, tried to do something together in the WWE right before they both wound up leaving because they realized that like WWE just like, wasn't going to do it. And instead they just wanted him to keep being stardust. And he was like, I'm out of here. And she wound up leaving. So like, um, so yeah, I mean, she, she had a really, really, really underwhelming WWE run the first time. And then, you know, got basically booed out of AEW. So like, it's gotta be pretty gratifying to, you know, to get a, have a moment like that at wrestlemania for her and then not just the entrance the entrance was incredible then also be in the ring right there with cody right after he won that was awesome thank you triple h 
How is Cody a baby face? What kind of question is that? Well, he's doing Triple H cosplay. And Triple H is, you know, a heel, always been a heel. Ric Flair, one of the greatest heels ever, pays tribute to him a whole lot. The suits, the suits has always been a heel tactic. Let's put Austin in a suit. No, let's put Daniel Bryan in a suit. No, the suits has been a heel tactic. He's got a giant America logo on his, you know, neck, blonde hair. He's very corporate. Yeah. You know, wrestling has always been like counterculture of like, hey, let's go against the man. Let's go against the machine. Cody is the machine. Um, yeah, but also like John Cena, you could say like all that same. John stuff Cena didn't wear suits though. John, that he, was he John did. Cena's he man. did when he made appearances though. He did a lot of stuff where he was. Going. Yeah, but even he has said, you know, they instituted the dress code shortly after he would like, kind of became the guy. He's like, no, I, I'm not going to show up in suits. Because that's against my whole character. My whole character is, you know, I'm Chang Gang John Cena. Like, that's against me. Yeah, so, but when he showed up on all the talk shows and the morning shows. Sure, but that's different that. than showing up to the arena and in the ring in a suit. Like, the talk shows are one thing. That's that's completely different. Okay, well, I'm not going to call Cody a heel because he wears a suit on the wrestling show. I, I didn't ask you to call him a heel. I said explain how he's a baby face. Um, explain. So, like, you want me to, did I not just do that uh, a second ago when I explained? You, you uh, explained the, like the his story. story. You explained his story. Um. Okay. So, I mean, I could I could talk for like the next hour about why he's a baby face, but I guess the the most obvious one would be he came down and he took out the the most evil villain the company had for the last four years. I'd say that that's a pretty baby face move. Took out the family that's been running roughshod on the company for the last half a decade. Beat him for the title. So Roman was such a good heel that made Cody a baby face. Okay. Okay. That definitely added to it for sure. I think anybody who beat Roman, it would have been like a baby face move for sure. So but, that's a credit to Roman, not necessarily Cody. Well, that's a credit to Roman, which I gave him his credit for before I explained everything at the top of the show for sure. Right. But like, um, but also, you know, when you're as over as Cody is, that's part of this too, obviously, right? Like the chance, every time his music hits, the chant, the chants get louder. Everyone's singing his song. Everyone's doing the woe thing. People are invested. They want to cheer for the guy. Um, I mean, what else makes him a baby face? He's, I mean, you got it on the actual wrestling show. Like he, he keeps beating heels. Brock Lesnar attacked him. He beat Brock Lesnar. Well, again, this is this is good heels, is what you're telling me. Yeah, Anybody that's how can go works, right? But what the is entire foundation you know, of wrestling? Is what you're talking about? You famously, famously on this show said you didn't get L.A. Knight. You didn't understand why the crowd was behind L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight just feuded with good heels, right? It's no, the same thing Cody's doing. No, L.A. Knight. The I don't if I say what I want to say, it's gonna sound like I'm roasting the guy too much, and I don't that's not he does he does essentially what Carlos Mencia did. He takes he's he's a he LA Knight is a great performer with other people's stuff. That's what that's what Cody's doing with Ric Flair and Triple H. He's just doing Ric Flair Triple H cosplay. He's not just doing Ric Flair and Triple H cosplay. His moves. I mean, is, did you watch is, WrestleMania 40? From start to finish, that was Triple H. I mean, that's the like, entrance was inspired by Triple H, but that's also because of the history these two guys have and him breaking the throne and all that stuff. I mean, there's layers to that, obviously. His whole character is inspired by Triple H. I mean, there's definitely parallels there, for sure. I'm saying it's Dusty. I understand why Dusty was a babyface. Dusty, common man, you know, hard times. He looked like your average American. Son, plumber and everything. Cody Rhodes, he was handed everything. He's a Rhodes. He's second generation. Oh my God. Right Rhodes. into the business. Oh my God. This is like a level of trolling. Cody Rhodes is more Ric Flair. Life. CM Punk was right. Cody Rhodes is more Ric Flair than Dusty Rhodes. 
Okay. I don't, I don't, honestly don't even know how to respond to a lot of this. Refute me. Ugh. Jeremy, your level of trolling right now is. Am I trolling or am I just asking questions? <sighs> we can move on. I'm not going to sit here and, 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 defend if Cody Rose is a baby face or not. Yeah, only a gallon of water, but yeah, I'm drinking a gallon of water right now. Hurst Hill says, will Cody make the winged eagle as he promised? If so, I'm definitely buying that belt. He says he's going to try, and then he said it's uh, it's it's up to Triple H. So I assume it's going to happen because Triple H is the savior of everything. So if the winged eagle happens, remember Cody, it's not him, it's Triple H. Well, also don't forget that Cody brought back the original, the, the white strap IC title belt when he was Intercontinental Champion and Triple H was not in power then. So I think that that was his idea and then that got greenlit. Are we sure Triple H didn't come up with that idea? <laughs> I mean, we can't, Positive. I can't, I can't, uh, you know, definitively, you know, I don't work there. So I can't, you know, I'm not, I don't know for sure. I'd imagine well, Triple H had nothing to do with that. Well, if if the winged eagle comes back, it is definitely a Triple H call. Which I think will happen. I think Cody will bring back the winged eagle. I mean, or at least some sort of version of that title belt that looks more like that for sure. And I think that thing is also just start calling it the WWE Championship, which they kind of, I, I think they still, they're kind of mixing it, how, they, they, how they've announced him as the champion. They've kind of gone. Yeah, I can't tell if they're just screwing it up or what they're trying to do. Yeah. It would be just way easier to just call it the WWE Championship at this point. Um, and then also, like, Damian Priest winning the other title. I, I love seeing Drew McIntyre win. That was a great moment for him. Like, that was awesome. And then the way he got up and see on Punk's face on my commentary table, that was good stuff, too. And then I was actually pretty shocked when, like, I didn't expect Punk to just sit there and just, like, take it. But, like, the way, like, as physical as he got, I wasn't expecting. So, like, all that actually played out really, really well. But I... uh I'm interested to see where they go with Priest with this title because Cody's talking about wanting to be on Raw and SmackDown. So like, and they're about to do a draft and you really don't need the title that Damian Priest has if Cody's going to be on both shows. And I definitely prefer there just to be one world champion anyways, personally. But, um, you know, good on Damian Priest though. I mean, he looks pretty cool with the title. I'll give him that. Like he's like, you know, I don't, he, I, I wish he wasn't the like 12th most over guy on the roster like when he won the title, but they played it off. They, they played it well with the way that he cashed in. It was, it at least made him look smart. Do you want to talk about anything else from WrestleMania 40 before we move on to the rock and Cody segment from Monday? Um, is there anything else that comes to mind that you would want to talk about? I mean, it was a good show. I liked WrestleMania. I liked the, you know, both nights I enjoyed, you know, I enjoyed the shows, obviously, this is the biggest thing that happened, but. Well, we got to make sure to one, thank Triple H again for having you, the Triple biggest H. WrestleMania ever. Thank you um, for getting professional wrestling as well. I appreciate that. Yes. I like the night one main event. I know you touched on it a little bit. It was long, but they probably could have cut out a, an early portion of that match. But Rock, I mean, the, the ending stretch of that was fantastic, though. I really like the, the finish with the. Uh, hitting Cody with the weight belt and then leading into the finish. And then the, the pinfall rock work way harder than I kind of expected him to. I know like tag team match, he was able to, to do it, but you know, rock hadn't wrestled in an actual match for 11 years. And he looked uh, you know, all things considered really good out there. And obviously yeah. the moment was the moment was always going to be bigger than the match itself. And it certainly was a little long, but still, I love that the rock came in by the way. And just, Got his own title, beat down Cody every single turn, pinned Cody, and the only L he really took was the Undertaker choke slamming him. Yeah, amazing cool. power play by that man. But he it's got smart. Nothing, no choice but to respect it. It's smart though because they're clearly. I mean, we'll talk about this now, but like they're clearly building to The Rock versus Cody at some point in the near future for the title. So like, that's 
<clears throat> that's really smart from that standpoint to have the rock looking that strong going into that because like we haven't seen him take any L since he came back and he did look really good in that match. Like he can, he can absolutely him and Cody <clears throat> because people forget, like I shouldn't say people forget, but um, like the rock versus Hogan, that match, in my honest opinion, is one of the best matches in wrestling history. But like the actual in ring match, like if you like turn, the, I've heard people make this comparison to or talk about this too. If you like turned all, if you're on the volume of that match up, you watch that on mute, totally, di totally different experience, right? Like it's not, you know, they're not doing a whole lot. But because of the way the crowd's reacting to everything, that's what makes it one of the best matches ever. And I think that, I shouldn't say I think, I know that both Cody and The Rock right now, could put on a way better in ring match than the rock and Hogan. But we already know based on that, all you need to really do is like that level. You know what I mean? So like the rock just needs to like not take any like crazy risks and Cody just needs to do his thing. And that match will be incredible because the, just the reactions alone. And, that, and that's something also that was, in, that's interesting about this too, is like the rock still has a lot of fans, obviously that are still cheering him, even though he's, you know, the, the final boss and the villain and everything. Like the only time Cody was really kind of getting booed at all throughout the weekend or like a mixed reaction is when it was him versus the rock, because you know people were still hyped on the rock being there. So that's going to be a pretty cool dynamic. I think whenever we get the rock and Cody actually one-on-one, -on -one. but if you want to like set this up from like what happened on Monday, we can talk about that a bit more. Oh, well, Cody, you know, after triple H introduced them and triple H, you know, invented professional wrestling and invented Monday night raw and gave Cody his big video package. He invented video packages. Cody talked, he referenced triple H a lot and I don't really remember what he said. I'm sure he just tried to be a baby face. And then finally the, the segment picked up when the rock came out and walked around for 20 minutes before speaking as well. And then the rock said, don't go breaking my heart. And then he handed him something. And all of this took 45 minutes. I mean, it was a good 45 minutes, so I, I enjoyed it. I don't, I, I don't want to be dismissive. I actually really enjoyed the segment. I thought it was pretty compelling. Uh, I know people were like, oh, oh, 45 minutes of the wrestling show. Look, man, if you don't, if you don't know what you're getting from WWE at this point, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, and I don't think it's a bad thing that the crowd was so into this segment that it went 45 minutes you you kind of want the crowd into stuff rather than just sitting on their hands so i didn't have yeah. an issue with it and that's a credit to both guys right to have a 45 minute long segment that like people are actually into like it is a big credit to the rock and triple h yes and yeah okay well you said um, both guys i was naming naming the two guys yeah okay you can you, like all right. I just want to make sure you're giving credit to the right people. You can I if have you said a three thousand guys, times. If you said three guys, then I would be like, oh yes, Cody was also there. But you said both guys. Yeah, both the guys uh in the ring throughout that segment. So um Judge Shuttle. I know that I'm being <laughs> oh this is for, yeah, this might be his first time watching the show. I know that I know that Jeremy's messing with me. I'm we got a lot weird. of first time people. Somebody else was in here of like what, is yeah. Jeremy like being sarcastic. No, like, this is this race? is why if you watch our 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 episode last week when we interviewed Teal Rhodes, I made sure to throw Jeremy under the bus and watch him cower. Deservedly so. Right. I'm not we, this this is this has been going on between me and Jeremy when it comes to Cody for years. So this is this is nothing new. Um but it is a bit annoying because you obviously know that I'm giving Triple H credit. I already have, and I'm going to going. Forward. I need to make sure everybody in the chat, the the viewers on replay. I need to make sure everybody is giving Triple. H. This is not just you, Jensen. This is everyone. I need to make sure everyone makes sure Triple H gets credit. Yes, they because you know WWE definitely made sure of that this week. That was the biggest takeaway from this week from me is. Praise Triple H. So that's what I'm doing. All I'm doing, all I'm doing is following what WWE wants me to do. Maybe that makes me a sheep. That's fine. But I I am I can admit that. And I'm just following what the biggest story of the week, which was thank you, Triple H. Okay. Now I will respectfully disagree and say that the biggest story was was Cody Rhodes, but thank you. Mm. But thank you, Triple H. It's thank not the Cody Triple Rhodes H. era. <laughs> Nobody's calling it that. No, no. It kind of, I mean, 
but it is. Is it? Nobody said that. Even Cody wouldn't <laughs> say that. Cody's calling it the Renaissance era. It's That's the Triple true. H era. Cody wouldn't put himself. Cody wouldn't call it. Cody himself wouldn't call himself the the Cody Rhodes era. You know he wouldn't do that. Why, coward? Oh, cow! It's all about cowards. Yeah. Okay. Um. Anyways, I don't even remember what we were talking about. Oh yeah. So the so the actual segment. So a lot of people were talking about how they think that the Rock handed Cody the watch, the that whole the watch that uh that they gifted to. So there's this whole story about when when Dusty sold, he had to pawn a Rolex so that Teal and Cody could go to California for acting school when Cody had graduated. And that they bought him or found this watch and Cody was wearing it in the press conference after WrestleMania. So that's the only reason I'm like, is it the watch? Because like we all saw him wearing it already but at the same time like those kind of things aren't necessarily like canon to what the WWE does on screen if that makes sense so like they're i think the WWE is viewing it as like a very very and this is the truth it's like a very small portion of the audience you know maybe compared to, will bring it up it was a very small small portion of the audience like would have watched the press conference and would even know this story yet about this watch you know so maybe that's what it was what do you think it was oh, the way they were talking i thought it was you know something of like i think sean made the hotel room hotel room key joke oh, that's funny they were well it was a little awkward there well, I, I really belts, it was super awkward i will say that when they were like traded belts i was like this this has gotten very weird yeah. Well, I brought this up. I brought this up on on in the weeds. I know other people brought this up as well. Of Rock was the one who essentially invented the, or at least brought to light the giant WWE logo title. It was the scratch right. logo at the time, and then Cody was the one that came out and was like, "Let me hold that." So that was kind of like a callback to that. Is like Rock get brought that giant WWE logo title to WWE, and now because Cody interrupted his promo 12 years ago, 11 years ago. That's a good callback. I'd Cody actually forgotten was... about that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I have seen called. people mention a lighter rock animal lighter to reference Cody's bus getting set on fire, oh. uh, which is something that happened. Like that's not in WWE canon, but obviously they can bring that up if they want to. Um, the whole, like he said, you know, don't, break my heart again that's where <laughs> i don't know i don't know if like a lighter makes sense like how did cody break the rock's heart and what is he handing him to ensure that that doesn't happen again like obviously they'll they'll touch on it whenever rock comes back i would hope cody references it at some point he's gonna be on smackdown tomorrow It'd be nice if Cody did reference it tomorrow with what he handed. You know, where's where's one of where's Kathy Kelly to ask these questions? True. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think it was? I mean, the watch I think makes the most sense, probably, but like that's probably the only thing I could think of that would have been, you know, small enough that they could have like palmed it and handed it over without anybody assuming he even handed him what, you know. I don't know. It's a really good question. I mean, that that's the whole thing, right? That's that's why they left it open ended like they did is, you know, because they want us to wonder what it was. But that that line about don't ever break my heart again or whatever is like that's that means there's more layers to this, you know, but that's also why like, something like the watch would be really meaningful and symbolic and stuff like that. Um, Because you could have a story once again. Now, have they not shown Cody wearing this already? I think it'd be a lot more effective, but like once again, a lot of the audience hadn't seen this or known this. So that's, that's okay. But like, that would kind of make sense because like, imagine if like the story is something like, you know, Dusty had to pawn the, the watch off and the rock wound up with the watch, you know? And he's like, 
you know, and he's like, like he's giving it back to Cody or something like that. Like, I don't like, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. It's going to be, it's hard. It's hard to know what this is going to be. There's a lot of options, obviously. And this is like, it's all really kind of out of nowhere. I think because they already told that story in the press conference, I don't know if they're going to go that route. I understand it's, it's different audiences. Not everyone watched the press conference so you can get away with it. But I do think enough people watch the press conference to where they wouldn't even, I mean, maybe they would still try it, but I I don't think they're going to go with that because enough people had watched the press conference and they're clearly paying attention to the online feedback and everything. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't think they're going to go that route with the watch just because they've already referenced it. They've already said it was triple H Bruce Pritchard, Nick Khan. Maybe there's some right. TKO shares, you know? So he handed he handed him physical shares of yeah. Um, and in the chat, let us know. A lot of people saying the crazy stuff. Crack, or, <laughs> crack. Yeah, I said that lighters. on Wednesday. It's just crack, crack lighters, whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, but I mean, it's, I think it's pretty cool that we're going to get the rock versus Cody one-on-one -on -one for the title. Like that's pretty badass. Um, that's another one where like, once again, just thinking back when I was once again, seeing Cody wrestling in high school, the rock, this was like 2002. So like the rock was already well established in the WWE like, <coughs> the face of the company was already starting to dabble in movies. And like the idea then of like, Cody Rhodes wrestling the rock was like completely impossible. It's so it's like, to me, this is just completely mind blowing. Like that they've even done as much as they have with one another up to this point. The fact that they're going to be building a one-on-one -on -one match between the two. Now, another question I have is when do you think this match actually happens? Cause the rock is going to be leaving for a while. It sounds like, and when it happens, do you actually have the rock beat Cody for this title? To eventually set when because they're still going to obviously do the rock versus roman at some point and a lot of people would agree that that doesn't need the title and never did need the title to begin with that story and that match between the two of them but do you when do you think they do the rock versus cody and do you think there's a chance the rock actually beats cody for the title rock's filming schedule this year seems kind of crazy he's going into filming smashing machine and he's got moana live action then he's got moana 2 which is just voice work but it's still a schedule it, it doesn't seem like Rock and Cody's happening until Mania next year. And then I don't know when Rock and Roman, they actually get to that with everything. I could actually see... I could actually see Rock and... It'd be Rock and Roman, or Rock and Cody next year at Mania for the title. I could see Rock winning. I could see Roman being the babyface going after the title next year against Rock. I'm actually kind of in the same boat with that. I can see that maybe happening. I think, uh, I think that Roman will, the Rock's doing such good work as a heel. I think, cause I think initially the plan was probably for the rock to like be a short term heel because of the circumstances with the whole, we want Cody stuff. And then they were probably, you know, the, but the rocks probably really sinking his teeth into like what's going on right now. And he's just killing it right now as a heel. And there is a really interesting story there with Roman's redemption arc and him coming back as a baby face and the fans wanting to cheer him and everything and him coming back and beating the rock eventually. Um, Cause Roman should beat the rock whenever the two of them eventually wrestle. That, that I've always been firm on that idea. Um, it's not like Cody has the title. I want him to have a nice long title run. Don't get me wrong. I think it'd be badass if he held the title for a thousand days. But also at this point, like he did it. This is incredible. We're living in a world where Cody Rhodes is the champion and I'm obviously along for the ride. But now he's he's solidified in that mix, you know, and is going to be going forward. So like, you know, John Cena wasn't the WWE champion the entire time he was the face no, of the he company. Had it 16 but times. He, well, yeah, I mean, and, and he, but he was also the top guy for 15 years straight, you know, like full time or whatever. Um, so I'm just like, this is the big stamp of approval for Cody. So like, even if he lost the title, you know, to the rock at the Royal rumble or at WrestleMania or whatever, like 
obviously I don't want to see that necessarily, but like now, <coughs> I mean, Cody can't be the champion forever and he can always win the thing back. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just this to me, him winning this title symbolizes more than him just being the champion. It's like, it's the actual stamp of approval of like, he is the top baby face going forward. So like, whether you want to call him a baby face or not, Jeremy, that is what he is. But it is interesting, right? That he's, he's the same exact presentation, everything that he was in AEW, he, even to the point where like when he was getting booed out of the buildings, he was saying like, I'm trying to stick to this. I don't want to turn heel. Now, granted, there were apparently plans for him to do that. And he was teasing it going like through the, the heel entrance tunnel and stuff like that. But like the idea of, of what he's doing, he wanted to uh, execute an AEW. What he's doing right now, he wanted to do for AEW as their top good guy. And for their audience, it just, it got rejected, but it's just amazing how you just plug and play that right into the WWE. And with a few minor tweaks with like the WWE production, you have what you have now. Um, so massive fumble by AEW, unfortunately, and that one. Um, but you know, incredible for the WWE and incredible for Cody Rhodes, whose lifelong goal. Like I, I think he has, a ton of pride in AEW. And I think he loves a lot about AEW and still wants them to succeed and all that stuff. But I mean, he wanted to be the WWF champion his entire life and, and finish this story that his dad never got to really finish and all that stuff. And it just really, it's awesome that he actually got to do it, but I could, I could see the rock maybe being the one to beat him eventually, but I think Cody needs to beat the rock too, at least in one of their one of their matches has got to get it done. We can't just keep seeing the rock beating Cody over and over and over again and him not get that back. Nah. <laughs> Isn't it is like, I don't think Cody <laughs> needs to hold the title to, you know, losing it to let's say rock at WrestleMania. He can lose it at survivor series, get it back at like rumble and then do a program with the rock at WrestleMania. No one says he's got to hold it the entire time. That's, that's fair too. And it honestly depends on who the, what the story is and who the opponents are and like what the plans are for everything. I'm, I'm, I'm up for all ideas at this point. Um, Cause now I've like, I've gotten what I want. Like, this is incredible. Like it actually happened, you know? So let's see. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what's next, but we do know that the rock and the, the rock and Cody is going to happen at some point in your future. And now Cody technically is on, I mean, not the, hashtag uh the brand split isn't real but like cody is technically a smackdown superstar now right because he's that yeah. champion so I mean, the I draft guess, is the draft is in a few weeks so they'll just they'll figure it out now but i wonder who his actual first like challenger for the title is going to be because they'd have to figure that out before the draft right like we might find that out like as far as soon as like smackdown i mean yes but also no they could just kind of have them do stuff until after the draft again draft is in just a couple of weeks so i don't know how they're if they're gonna go ahead and make him into a feud immediately or if they could just hold off until after the draft i assume someone comes up comes out on smackdown and kind of confronts him i mean yeah. i would like you had roman for four years and the big knock on him was oh he doesn't show up he doesn't show up i can't confront him Cody's going to show up on every show. So go out there and get in his face. Who do you think should do that? You know, Fatu has allegedly signed. He's telling people he signed with WWE. Are you talking about Jacob Fatu? Like yeah, pushing Jake. him right into Cody? Yeah. You know, people thought he was going to interfere in the main event. So you make him immediately by doing the Cody feud. But the problem is he's losing that feud. Right. And so I don't know if you want him immediately. It's a big... You know, it's obviously a big feud, though. You're feuding with Cody. If sure. even if you lose, you can. You're still kind of made right there. Solo, Solo's a little placeholder, and unfortunately, no one buys Solo at this point because he they've treated him how they've treated him. So we give you a placeholder thing and, and move on. What other? You know, Cody. Cody, he's, he's the top baby face. He needs a he needs the great heel, right? So what great heel do they have? Randy, Randy turning on him could make some sense. I think we'll eventually get that at some point. We'll get Randy and Cody for the title. Um, there was something you just mentioned that I was going to. Sorry, who's the, the, the first person you mentioned? 
Jacob Fatu or so. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I want to mention because there was a lot of speculation about him because you know he got pulled from GCW over the weekend, like, and nobody knew until the match actually happened. He was supposed to be a part of the Punjabi Prison tag team four way for the GCW tag titles. Um, and I did not say that out of like that actually did happen for people who there was a Punjabi prison match um, at uh, the cluster at, well, I can curse at this point. We're super deep in the show. The, cl- the cluster fuck. Um, they, uh, but it was supposed to be Jacob Fatu and Zilla Fatu were going to be teaming together. And during the entrances, everyone realized it was Zilla and Juicy Finale. And everyone was like, wait, what is like Jacob was advertised this entire time. Um, but then that would lead to the speculation that he's, he wouldn't be there because he was probably heading to the WWE. I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm not against the idea of Jacob coming in and wrestling Cody. I just think that they maybe build him a bit more than that, but Jacob, yeah, but you want to, uh, you want to make him. I mean, yeah. he destroys Cody his first night. Like, it really destroys it. This has always been my issue with Solo is his stuff doesn't always look as good as you would hope it to look for a guy like his size and the way they tout him and everything. Jacob Fatu's stuff looks that good. He looks like yeah. he's, he's murdering somebody out there. Yeah. I, uh, I've i been saying this for a minute, too, that I think uh, it's just a matter of time before they sign Zilla. And I think I would put money on they they'll team Zilla and solo as a tag team in the WWE. they will be like, a, they will be a tag team. I can almost promise that because Zilla Z- Zilla is actually Umaga's son and like vibes. Um, I, mean, I, I call him new Maga on the weekend or all the time. Like he's like solo Sokoa is basically like kind of the new version of Umaga on screen with like the thumb and everything. Like Zilla is the same thing on the indie scene in GCW. Like he's doing the same thing. Like the two of them would be perfect as a tag team. Um, also, I think that they should bring in Juicy Finale at some point. Also, as kind of like their Yokozuna type, like Rikishi type, you know, big guy for the group. Because Juicy can he can work to like you know he can do moon salts and stuff when he needs to. Um, but um, you know, visually and stuff, like it just, if you kind of have like a new bloodline, like a new like era of the, that's actually where I think this is probably going to wind up going is the rock will take over the bloodline as while well, Roman's gone. And the kind of new bloodline will be like Jimmy solo, Zilla, Jacob, uh, juicy. Like you could, you could have like this whole next generation of bloodline under the rock potentially. Um, okay, but rock's not showing up weekly though. Right, I, but I mean, he still show up often enough, I think, to like mm. be the be the leader of the group. I don't know. Roman's more likely to show up than Rock is. Well, I mean, or I guess you can do it with Roman as the leader still. But I mean, I feel like you, I wouldn't completely abandon the entire idea of the bloodline because you have the big potential part. of bringing in all these other family members that are TV, basically TV ready. Like Zilla is a bit newer and, and juicy is a little rough around the edges when it comes to certain stuff like in the ring, but like at the most, for the most part, like the, on, depending on how they're booked, they could pull it off right now on screen. Jacob's TV ready right now and has been for a long time. Obviously he was like the backbone of MLW for, for years. Um, but uh, maybe even like Rikishi or somebody comes in to be like a mouthpiece. Or I don't know. Like you'd ha- I understand what you're saying though. If like if the rock's going to be, the leader of this thing, you'd want him there more regular. But I mean, Roman wasn't there that often. I mean, he was on TV a lot, but he didn't wrestle often. So it is a little different, but I mean, Heyman's the mouthpiece of all. Oh, sorry. Heyman, of course, is the mouthpiece. You're right about that. I do think they need uh, actual new blood in the bloodline, though, because Jimmy Uso, they beat him every week. He's kind of meaningless. And Solo, they're start. They've been beating him ever since the, the scene of victory. He hasn't done anything. So they do need somebody new in there to make it seem like this group is good again. Cause they've, they've really down outside of Roman. Like they've really just, they've downplayed the importance, especially once rock came in, they've really downplayed the importance of Jimmy and solo. So you need somebody yeah. in there to boost them up again. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that. Now in a perfect scenario though, like if the rock was there, even like semi-regular, you think that that'd be the way to go would be, the rock leading a new bloodline. If you, if he was going to be around, 
Yeah, but he even he said he's not going to be around. So I'm not trying to book this. The uh, this is the Rock is going to be around more than. I don't know if he, we're going to see him until like July. You, you're not just doing stuff until July, and I think Roman will at least show up every couple of weeks to lead something. Heyman's obviously going to be a big part of everything anyway, but I, th- I still think Roman is the leader of everything. Yeah. Uh, one guy uh, conspicuous by his absence was uh, Manu. Remember that guy? He didn't show up at uh, WrestleMania throughout any of this. Um, I'm going real deep cut on that. Huh? Yeah, that was legacy, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but he's in the bloodline and not once brought up or mentioned in any of this. Well, and he, he was only there for a very short amount of time. I get that. But like, I just thought that that was kind of, I don't know, just worth kind of pointing out as like an Easter egg almost that like, if you go back and you watch the legacy run from years and years ago with Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, Ted DiBiase, um, Manu was a part of the group very briefly, and he is a part of the NOI family, um, but just didn't just didn't last. Yeah, so. <laughs> Anything else from Cody Rhodes and Triple H, obviously? I mean, y'all know uh, how I feel at this point about all of it. I am uh, very, very happy for Cody. I... Uh, I'm glad that he's the champion. He, I think he, he deserves it. Um, and like I said, it can't be it can't be stated enough that in a world of wrestling where you don't know what you're going to get from a lot of these people, um, and there's a lot of really bad people out there, and luckily some okay, of them. Okay, I, I, you, you've you've said this before, and I, I want to. Mm-hmm. Roman Reigns didn't do anything wrong. I'm not even saying Roman. Oh, of course not. I'm not. Even I know, but you're you're making it see. You're making it seem like oh, Cody. We know we can count on him. Like they had the belt on Roman for four years, and they can count on him. This is not a Cody. Bur- He's the virtue of beaconism. I don't think I said that right, but like Roman yeah. is pretty well established and big family mm-hmm. man, and even went away during COVID because of leukemia, and I've- because he didn't want to put people at risk. I'm not taking anything away from Roman in that sense at all, but Brock Lesnar was also their top guy for a very long time. Vince McMahon was the face of their company for a very long time. These are people who were not reliable, who are very important to the company's history that are being erased from the company's history. You don't have to worry about that with Cody. That's my point. I'm not taking anything away from Roman Reigns. I think Roman Reigns is an incredible human being. As somebody who has lost multiple family members to cancer, I have massive respect for a guy who can not only fight and battle that, but also continue to do what he's doing. Um, while also, to my knowledge, still he's still battling it to this day. You know, like he's always going to probably have to deal with it, and like that's it sucks that he has to deal with that. I think Roman Reigns is a great person. He was a great. He still is in a lot of ways the face the face of that company. It's just. Yeah, you know, so I don't I don't want to even insinuate that that this has anything to do with Roman Reigns being a bad person. Roman Reigns is a great human being, but we've had really terrible human beings that have been a part of this company and been the face of this company. And you don't have to worry about that with Cody. That's my point. Okay. I don't, I don't want people to think that you're downplaying Roman and acting like what is, what does this mean about Roman? Because he's been the guy for the last four years. He's been incredible. He's been the guy for the last like decade. It's just yeah. it's been working for the last four years. But no, he's been the handpicked guy for a very long time. And I have I have no problem. I would love to meet Roman Reigns, shake the guy's hand, and thank him for what he's done. I would think you Roman acknowledge him. I absolutely would. If he was if he was in front of me right now, I'll tell you what. I definitely wouldn't boom in a press conference. That's for sure. <laughs> that ruled. He should have won on night two just because of that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, I think Roman Reigns is, is an exceptional human being. I'm a humongous fan of that guy. And the other thing too is like, the dude was a Minnesota Viking. You know what I mean? Like, I, I. Well, that's when you knew he was music, but you know. Um, but but no, it was. I I've even said it. I've said it a thousand times. Even when, like, if a if it wasn't Cody, like, I wanted Roman to keep being the champion. Like, you know what I mean? He's one of outside of honestly outside of like Cody and like Drew McIntyre. Roman Reigns is like maybe my favorite guy that they have in the entire company. It's just, it was time for him to lose. And Cody was the right guy. I got nothing against Roman Reigns. Okay. I just, I don't, I don't want people thinking that it's like, what is he trying to imply about Roman? No, I don't know. I'm praising Cody. Listen, I, I appreciate you bringing that up from the sense of like, I don't want, I don't want there to be any misconception that like me alluding to bad human beings and Cody being not like that 
has anything to do with Roman. It has nothing at all to do with Roman. I would, I would, I would echo the same exact stuff I say about Cody about Roman as a human being. I think they're both great human beings. Um, and when Roman comes back, he'll probably be doing a lot of the make a wishes. And all, you know what I mean? Like he'll, he'll be a baby face too, when he comes back and he'll, so I'm, I'm here for it. Congratulations to Roman on a great title run and to Heyman and everybody involved. I thought it was, I thought it was awesome. Good for those guys. All right. Before we move on one last thing, Jensen, will you say thank you, Triple H one last time? Thank you, Triple H. I, I really appreciate him going through with this. I think he did the right thing. And it wasn't an easy decision. It was an easy decision to make as far as like Cody was the best option, but it's still not. Well, it was an easy, easy de- it was an easy decision to make because now he gets all the credit for everything. You know, if he had, if he had kept the title on Roman, they couldn't do the big thank you Triple H at the end of the show. So it feels like it was a very easy decision <laughs> to make, honestly. That's, that's true. He, yeah. uh, he made sure that he was able to get himself over with the Cody yeah. win. But to be, to be fair to your point though, like, Triple H would have taken a lot of shit if Triple if uh, Roman would have retained there. He would have gotten a lot of shit for that. And people would have been like, oh, it's the same old stuff. Same exactly. old That's stuff why he didn't before. do it. He's like, no, I want to be loved. I want to be appreciated. I got to have Cody win. I don't this think is less about Cody winning and <laughs> no. more about making sure that Triple H gets his flowers. Yeah, I That's disagree. What the whole weekend with, was about. I disagree with that. But I think that I think that that, that it ties, there is a tie in there where Triple H was able to get his flowers simultaneously. that that's what that's what the whole weekend's about that's why he did it if roman had won they would have been like no how could you do this you're worse than vince you're the same you you're afraid you're a coward triple h so he's like nope i don't want to answer those questions i'm just gonna make sure cody wins so everybody praises me thank you triple h pod driver finisher saying let's talk about last week's teal interview and my cowardice I fully admitted this. You guys aren't catching <laughs> yeah, me in anything here. He did. Like he admitted it before it even happened. Like, yeah. the, like the week leading into it, he was like, I'm telling y'all right now, I'm gonna be a coward whenever this happens. And then like when I brought it up, he was like, he, he owned being a coward about it. So yeah, I, I want no smoke with Teal. I wanted no smoke with Brandy. I, I think both of them are great. I appreciate Teal coming on the show and you know, I don't know if she's going to come back now that she knows that I'm not the biggest Cody fan in the world, but I no, you know, y'all we, yeah, I was going to say what people don't know is like, we actually talked after the interview for like another like 20 minutes or so and just continued to just chat about things. So like, I I'm pretty sure Teal and I are okay. Uh, we'll see if she comes back on the show. I'd love to have her back. Teal's fantastic. I, no, yeah. I don't want any smoke with Teal or Brandy. They're the they'll murder me. Not dumb. I'm old and I'm fucking tired and I work with fucking children. <laughs> I'm tired of wrestling these kids that think they uh, they know everything. The footage aired. The footage aired, Steven Jensen. Yeah. You want to take a victory lap on this? I don't know what victory lap you're taking, but go for it. Well, I want to know your thoughts first, Jeremy. My thoughts on like the footage, the the decision, the to whole scenario, it. yeah, the decision to air it, what the footage was, did it did it confirm things you expected, or is it anything out of the like? What, what how were your thoughts about this before I get into it? My thoughts were that it was hilarious that they decided to air it. I guess it got the intended reaction because the fans were chanting for CM Punk. That was the point, right? To get make sure CM Punk got over. So they did that. The footage was about what I expected. Um, Punk was the aggressor, very clearly. I don't think that's debatable. Uh, I, I know Punk maybe said otherwise, but it's not really debatable. Nothing really happened. It just looked like two dudes kind of scuffling and got them in a choke, got pulled off, separated. How was that? Like, I think people know me by now. Is like, I don't care that much about these things. I don't have attachment to these things. Whatever's funny is funny to, to like, that's what I'm here for. I thought this was hilarious. Do you think that that's like normal behavior? Like that, like if you disagree with somebody at work, whether you're a professional wrestler or like just someone like in an, an office or whatever, I know those things are different, but at the end of the day, we're still talking about like a, a work environment. So people, you're an employee. People keep doing the, 
oh, if this happened at an office, he would be fired. Look, I think it's very justifiable to fire him for what he did. I think it would have been justifiable to fire him for after All Out. That mm-hmm. All of that would have been just Yeah. Like, you know, the, the things he said about people, the whatever did happen backstage at All Out, I think that would have been justifiable to fire him. Yes, it was justifiable to fire him at work or, or because of what happened at All In. If it was... It, it, certainly, if this happens in an office setting, you're going to fire that person. Here's, but here's the thing, one, that maybe people are not remembering or don't care about because they're only, you know, it's either CM Punk or AEW. But Punk also quit in his words. You know, he said he, you could see him say something to Tony Khan. And according to him, he, like, he said, lunged at him and had to be pulled back by, who's a Chris Hero? Lunged is, Gary Lynn. he was definitely walking angrily toward him, but. He had to be pulled away from him. Yeah, yeah. And I, I understand Tony Khan's position of you see this man who just got into a little scuffle here and he's coming at you the way he was coming at you. You probably are a little bit worried about things. Well, Punk said he, Punk said that he said in that moment, you're a clown, I quit. So again, they had plenty of reason to fire him. Here's what I don't understand is like people are like, oh, if this happened in an office, it would easily be fired. Yeah, no shit in an office. Let's not pretend like pro wrestling and sports in general is an office setting. Draymond Green punched his teammate at practice. What happened to him? Oh, I just had to take time away from my team. And then he came back and they gave him a friggin' ring in his first game back. Fights happen all the time in NFL. Training camp fights, that's a thing. They happen all the time in the NFL. There's a famous, it's, it's before the Panthers went to the Super Bowl. Cam Newton is grabbing jo- uh, Josh Norman by the face mask. Because Norman was trying to pop off at him. And Newton just slung him to the ground. This shit happens. Hockey. And CM Punk talks about his hockey player mentality. Mm -hmm. This is sports we're talking about. We're talking about men with a lot of testosterone. uh, Who get amped up on this stuff. CM Punk was about to go out there. In front of the biggest crowd in AEW history. He's probably already a little amped up. Jack Perry is already a little bit amped up. Do I think it's normal behavior? No. But do I think pro wrestling is normal? Fuck no. So I'm not going to be like, oh, CM Punk, look at him. He's a psycho. This isn't normal. This is not how a person should act. This is wrestling. is the backstage environment here. I think this happens maybe not a lot more than you think it would. You would hope it doesn't happen all that often. But I'm also not going to sit here and be like, oh, CM Punk is off, off the rocker for doing something like that. It happens in sports. It just does. Now, CM Punk certainly has a history with uh with the all out comments and everything, and just past mm-hmm. past with stuff. So certainly you can see like okay, it's maybe maybe it is a pattern. There was a thing here. with Ryan Neam and Nabith everyone forgets about where he apparently yeah, got into his face like, backstage because of a tweet, and CM Punk claims he isn't online, but he had gotten his face over a tweet. Go ahead. Yeah, again, there's certainly a pattern you can point at of of CM Punk. I don't do you disagree. think it's no, do you think there's any uh, do, you, do you think it's normal for anybody who has like legitimate MMA training that has competed in the UFC to be getting in anybody's face over like verbal arguments? Yes, I think that's is? actually more normal because these guys think they're even tougher because they're UFC fighters. So yeah, I think it's actually pretty normal that a UFC person is getting in people's faces about things. So I yeah, I do. Yeah, I disagree with that. Okay. I don't because you don't really. I mean, the UFC is a humongous roster of people, and like you rarely ever hear about incidents. And when you do, it's like super, super, super embarrassing. Um. So yeah, I mean, I can. You already know how I feel about CM Punk. You know, going into all this, I think it's pretty obvious. There's a really strange, repeated pattern of like him doing this stuff. Um, <clears throat> I think that he's very on edge and doesn't trust people at all. Um. And he pretty much admits as much in the Hawani interview. Like he, he says he respects everyone until you give him a reason not to. But then I think once you mess with that respect, he, he, you become more than just, he doesn't trust you. Like you are an enemy and anything you do, he is ready. The, the straw to break the camel's back is like anything is going to set him off. He goes from zero to a hundred. Like, and 
in the WWE environment, I don't think he's going to be able to do that. And I think that's a big part of the reason why everyone's he's so happy to be back. You know, he gets along with everyone. Yeah, because you're not going to actually get in Drew McIntyre's face. You're not going to actually get into Roman Reigns' face and these people. Like, that, and it's, it's also it's, it's also obvious that, like, look, he knows, I would assume he does, this is his last chance with everything. He screws yeah. this up. He's got nowhere else. So, yeah, of course he's going to be on his best behavior. Yeah, right. And I... And we expected that to be the case when he when he went there, you know. Um, do I have a problem with AEW airing the footage? Absolutely not, especially with the timing. Um, okay, if, let's, if, let's talk about the timing. They did sure. it because of uh, what Punk said on the MMA Hour, right? Mm-hmm. Like you agree well, that with a, that? Yeah. Well, okay. and and to be fair, for the longest time we've wanted to see this footage. We want to, we, and we still want to see what happened at all in. Like we've been, we, these are questions that are at all out. We've, we've been asking these questions since the day it happened. I mean, I remember when it happened, everyone just, who has the footage, who has the footage, leak the footage, leak the footage, leak the footage. Yeah. Well, but now, and then they took months to do it and it took this CM Punk interview for them to do it. So that yeah. was the timing. Because I think both, I think both companies to a degree, listen, they, there, there had been shots back and forth a little bit here and there. But for the most part, it seemed like both companies were kind of just like taking a high road to some degree where it's like, we're not going to mention you, don't mention us, like, just, let's just all just move on. But then Punk went on the MMA hour with Ariel Hawani, and Ariel, to his credit, is the best of all time at interviewing people and getting them to, to talk about the stuff that they normally won't talk about. And Punk went on there and said a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, either was true or wasn't true, but a lot of it made AEW and Tony Khan look really bad. And AEW has every right in the world to be like, listen, if he's going to go on this show and say all this stuff about us, we're just going to show the footage. Then we're going to take all the question out of this outside. There's no audio, but even then I don't, I don't give a fuck what Jack Perry said to CM Punk. The guy's got his hands in his hair, not defending himself. And Punk shoves him multiple times, either pie-faced him or, or swung at him. And when they get separated, he swung again uh, on the separation. And then lunges toward, we, we'll call it whatever you want to, goes towards Tony Khan and has to be pulled away from Tony Khan. And this is after getting in Ryan Nemeth's face. This is after the, the brawl incident and all this other stuff. And once again, I, it adds to me when you are a trained mixed martial artist. I think this looks bad on Rufus Sport. It looks bad on anybody who's who's training this guy to be like the last thing. The real badasses of the world are the people you don't know. They're, they're the people that that you that aren't out okay, there talking what, about what, it that aren't looks, getting in people's faces. What yeah. looks bad? The fact that he's like doing this in general, as, yes. as someone who trains. Okay. Because yeah. you've you've sat here and buried CM Punk for his MMA skills for yes basically ever since we do on this show yes. so then you saying like oh this looks bad on CM Punk as a trained MMA like even you've said like how trained he's, is he give him well no no he's he's very trained he just sucks there's a difference so he's he's CM Punk is still he still is trained at Rufus Sport he's still trained with the Pettis brothers he's still trained with Tyron Woodley he's still trained with Ben Ashburn he's still trained with all these people who are actual is he still with, training with these people well but but he even if he isn't at this moment he has he did for like four or five four or five six years whatever it was straight when he was with the UFC and preparing for the UFC and he was doing that full time and he got the guy. So the first fight. But if was, he's but if he's no longer associated with them, and it hasn't been for years, does it really make them look bad? I mean, I think it, just it makes does. Punk look bad. Well, it, do, it does make Punk look bad, and I would be a bit embarrassed if I was people on his team that trained him. It would be embarrassing for me. I'd be like, why is this guy like? We taught this guy how to fight, and like he's out there using it to get in. And by the way, not even looking good, like. What he did to Jack Perry wasn't impressive by any stretch of the imagination. Like he shoved him and then tried to put him in a guillotine and it got broke up in like half a second. Like Punk didn't like win or lose that fight. Nobody won or lost that fight. It was broke up before anything even happened. Right. It was a nothing. But it was instigated it was by him. He got in his face. He threw the first shove or whatever you want to call it. He was the one going at Tony Khan to whatever degree you want to call impressive. it. 
Right. And that's super, super weird to me. So like if, if people want to defend it and be like, well, it's just sports, it's just wrestling, fine, whatever. But like for people to act like Tony Khan is just this giant clown, this giant pussy because he, he couldn't handle it. Listen, it's not, it's not, is it Tony's con Tony Khan's job to like handle things in his company and stuff? Yes, but it isn't his job to be it, he's not it's not his job to be attacked by somebody or to have okay. or to have to const or to have to constantly be like this guy's a loose cannon, he's gonna get in someone else's face again. Uh oh, we don't want to piss this guy off, he's gonna shove someone again. Like that's not it's not any boss's job because you're expecting people to be adults and not be going around fighting everybody when I mean, you have a, a, a disagreement with them. I do think it's a little bit on Tony Khan who is standing right there when he sees them that close. They were talking for a while. Tony Khan heard everything that was being said. Did he think True. that it was just like, oh, they're just, you know, they're just talking about their dinner plans after this great show here. Maybe he should have been like, hey, can someone get over here and just be like, you know, let's uh, let's get them kind of separated here. He was standing right there. I don't know what Tony Khan said. I don't know what Tony Khan said while he was standing there. If he said anything, I would hope, hope he would have been like, hey, guys, can we, you know, not do this here? Can we back away? Or again, call somebody over. We saw plenty of people standing around. Get somebody be like, hey, Chris, hey, hey, Joe, come over here and let's, uh, you know, separate them a little bit. Tony Khan was standing right there. Yeah, but I also don't know how, I mean, you can't, you can't see him. And he's also like, the biggest you show know where he's at happening. though let's not act like he's super far away we know if if we are alleging that tony khan that punk lunged at tony khan which we see in the footage then that's tony khan right there they're three inches away from him okay well once again we don't know what was said between these guys so i also can't assume that it was but if know. you're going to assume that Punk is a, a hothead and he's got control issues and he is a loose cannon, then you could you should probably assume that if CM Punk and Jack Perry are face to face, that get somebody in here in there. And I right? just, I think that's a weird way to look at stuff. Like that you have a guy that's, that's how that you're big, looking that, at it. That that, that that the guys that 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 the guys is that big of a problem and that much of a loose cannon that anytime he's having a conversation with a coworker, it might go off the rails because we don't know what they were saying. If now, was Jack was you, could Jack Perry say something super disrespectful to him? I don't know. But what but what if he didn't? What if his hands are in his hair and he's just like, dude, I'm not intimidated by you. Quit getting in my face. I say what I'm saying. I'm not scared of you. And then Punk just shoved him. You know, we don't know. It's not so much about what Jack Perry is saying. It's what CM Punk is probably saying. CM Punk has admitted that he said, dude, what's your problem? I'll fucking kill you. That's what CM Punk said. He said, I can fucking kill you. That's what CM Punk said. He said. hilarious. Sure. But if you're Tony Khan and you hear that, then maybe say, if you're Tony Khan and you know Jack Perry and CM Punk have a problem, you know this, right? You knew this going into the event. So maybe if you see them talking, maybe even if like you, they're not saying anything at the time, maybe you just see them face to face like that. You should probably be like, hey, guys, like separate or call somebody over. Or maybe he doesn't see them at all because he's looking the other direction. Hey, managing oh, no, the I'm not show. buying that. Who, who knows? I mean, the, the biggest show of all time. You think it's possible that he wasn't looking directly at Jack Perry and CM Punk the whole time? He's maybe he was a little two inches away from them. He, he doesn't see them face to face and hear them. He's I don't know. Away from I don't know where he's looking. I don't know. Okay. But I, but I also but I also can't just like assume that like if I'm somebody's boss, even if they're like a problem, I can't just assume any time that they go up to somebody and have any kind of conversation that it's going to turn into Wait, a fight. You you just said that CM Punk has these issues and that CM Punk is known to do well, this listen, kind of he stuff. Listen, I'll, we're all, all, this is where I'll agree with a lot of the people that are anti Tony Khan, AEW in this scenario. This is where I'll agree. Tony Khan should have quote unquote handled the situation way before it got to this point. He should have let Punk go after all out that in hindsight, he should have, that's when it should have ended. When CM Punk, CM Punk claims he wanted out then, Tony Khan tried to make it work, tried to make it work, tried to make it work. They came up with this whole idea for Punk taking over Collision, tried to make it work, tried to make it work. I, they, they shouldn't have tried to make it work. 
I also, I will put blame on the Young Bucks and on Kenny Omega, whoever is responsible for not sitting down and having a meeting with Punk after Brawl Out, okay? Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, there are multiple people that are guilty in this scenario, but the fact that like, okay, well, they kept him because he was under contract and that's what happens to a lot of people. They're like, well, it happens and that we want to compare this to sports. It happens in sports all the time. People get disgruntled with their teams. Sometimes they wind up holding out. Sometimes they wind up playing the season. They have to renegotiate. They have to do extensions. It happens all the time in sports where people have, Trade have happen. disagreements. Trades happen, of course. So like, these are all valid, you know, things, <clears throat> but so in hindsight, yes, Tony should have just cut ties with punk when punk wanted out or after brawl out. But in Tony Khan's mind, he's probably thinking, man, we'll see him. Punk's my favorite wrestler. We tried so hard for so long to get this guy. We finally have him. We're finally making him the champion. He's to punk's credit. I will always credit it for this. He sells tickets. He sells merch. Like, he creates buzz. Tony Khan liked all of these things. And I think in a lot of ways, he prioritized CM Punk probably over some of the EVPs and stuff in certain scenarios. Cause it does sound like, which is fine. Cause it does sound like CM Punk was more than just a wrestler for that company. He basically was an EVP also. Like when you really look at what he was doing and the way he was running collision and all this stuff, like he had a lot of power. He was sitting right there next to Tony making decisions and stuff. So like, I think that, that that needs to be taken into account too is like i think that tony had more than just a, a a wrestler investment in punk he really saw punk as like a giant part of the company and part of the company backstage and everything so like in in punk still has a lot of friends there that are that are still going to be ride or die for him that see things from his point of view that agree from his point of view and there's a lot of there's plenty of wrestlers i've seen tweet that are like dude, how can people get upset about this? This is nothing people I've seen. I've seen three fights at indie shows this weekend and stuff like that. Like backstage between wrestlers, like happens all the time. And I, I get all of that. But at the same time, it's like when you have a guy who's consistently has a consistent issue at the end of the day, the right thing happened. He was terminated. He can say he was to quit or whatever. Maybe he, and I think he truly wanted to quit, but he had to be terminated to get out of his contract. So he was terminated. They fired him. Um, and that was that. And at the end of the day, that really should have been it from both sides. But CM Punk opened the can of worms again with the Hawani interview. And it put AEW in a position where they felt like they needed to backfire. And that their decision. Now, I will say this. Them tying that footage in with the Young Bucks story with FTR was actually pretty brilliant and pretty hilarious how they made it out to be like, that's why they lost it all out was because they were preoccupied with this stuff going on. I think obviously they only came up with this because they wanted to, they were dead set on airing the footage. They just needed to figure out a way of like, how do we air this without just like opening the show and being like, all right, everyone, here's the footage. Like they needed to like tie it into a story. So it made some sort of sense on the show as to why they were showing it. And also at the end of the day, this is going to be used as a, as a tool to reintroduce Jack Perry. I didn't imagine he'll be probably a part of the elite when he comes back and he'll hopefully he's using cry, cry me a river by Justin Timberlake as his theme music. And this will be big for Jack Perry's return. But at this point, I'd really, I'd honestly like to just like agree to disagree with everything that has to do with CM Punk, honestly, like we finally saw the footage. I'm glad we saw it. It, it erased a lot of the, 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 um, you know, speculation because we saw, we saw what happened. We don't know what we said, but we saw what happened. I think CM Punk was justifiably fired given even, even if, like this, this was just one incident too. If this was the only thing that had happened, it was just this one thing between him and Jack Perry. I'd probably say that was overblown. Probably don't fire him off of that one thing, but because of the repeated actions and all that stuff, I think it was justifiable. And now he's in the WWE. People say he's happy. He seems to be happy. And now I think everyone just can kind of move on, but I feel like we couldn't move on until we saw the footage and now we've seen the footage. So I'm we glad that AEW moved, ran it. We, we could have moved on before we saw the footage. We, we were ready to, I know punk brought but it up. That's my point though. Punk is the one who, who opened the wound again. So AEW felt like they had to do something about it. And I, I what's the problem that okay. people have with that punk is the one who instigated it again. Punk gave his side of everything. 
AEW, you're right. AEW felt like they had to do something. They didn't have to. They didn't. They didn't have to. But they decided to air the footage. Even that, And that's how they spun it into the storyline, right? Is Dax and Cash are like, we should have moved on. What are we doing? Still focusing on this. That's how they made it a storyline. I actually think they did the best of job they could with that to try to spin it into a storyline. What they didn't do well was just airing the footage in the first place. I don't think nobody looked good in this. Nobody looked good in this footage. Punk didn't look good. He was the aggressor going after it. I don't think the company as a whole looked great when this is happening on your biggest show and you couldn't mitigate things, control things for this to not happen. Samoa Joe, I guess, looked good. Chris yeah. Hero looked like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> that was the funniest part of all around of here. Chris Hero's reaction. Like, was nobody funny. really looked good. Yeah, Jack Perry, I guess, looked neutral, but even he kind of, like, you know, he looked like he just had no situational awareness. Jack Perry just looked like aloof this whole thing, which is like, all right, fine. But I don't think anybody looked good off of this. And I don't think it worked because what happened when the Young Bucks did their beatdown on Pac? What happened? Yeah, CM I know, Punk chant. I know, I know. They were chanting for CM Punk. I know. So CM we Punk saw a lot of fans. Yeah. So I don't think it was helpful in that sense. I think they tried. I said this yesterday before the footage aired. I said it on in the weeds. I was very curious, very interested to see how they would spin this into an angle to see how they would make the young bucks and soon to be Jack Perry, the heels out of coming out of this. And I think that they did a job at it, but I also said, if this is your play, if this is the best you got, if you sat down creatively and said, you know what we really need to make this story happen, we got to air this footage. I think that's an issue. I think if this is what you thought was going to be, hey, we need to air this footage so we can make the Young Bucks these great heels, I think that's an issue. Because what are they building here? They've got they've got the Young Bucks as the heels. they got Jack Perry as the heels. They could do that without the footage. You're not building a CM Punk match. He ain't coming back. And I, by the way, I said this when CM Punk came back on Collision and he was saying, oh, counterfeit Bucks, and he was trying to shoot himself into a work with Hangman Page. They didn't want to work with him. And he kept trying to needle and needle and needle, and it eventually all just backfired. But they didn't want to work with him, and he couldn't move on from the situation then. He couldn't move on from it. But he was trying to make a match happen that clearly was not going to happen. He had a better shot because at least they were all in the same company. But they're building a match that isn't going to happen because CM Punk's not going to be there. I don't think this footage accomplished anything. And I think it proof that it didn't accomplish anything because they got CM Punk chance on their show when he ain't in the company it backfired it just did i i understand what you're saying and in certain senses it did backfire like that but at the same time i'm glad that they aired the footage listen the thing with cm punk and i've seen people saying this in the you're chat glad they I, aired I the footage this. because it, it confirmed that cm punk is a hothead and an aggressor that's why you're glad they aired the footage yes when also it it to so Punk's point, he actually, what he said on on MMA Hour was like almost to a T exactly what it looked like happened. Like what I saw, like the way I played this out in my head is basically what we saw on the footage. What Punk didn't mention is the whole getting pulled away from Tony thing, but I think that's kind of important too. But Punk he did, did say he quit. turned, he did say he, he said he was a clown Tony. and he quit. Yes. He didn't say my coworkers had to pull me away from him. Because that did I'm happen sure, on camera. I'm sure in CM Punk's mind, he doesn't think that yeah, this is CM Punk's retelling of the story. I'm sure in his mind, he doesn't think he was being aggressive. He was never going to attack Tony. I'm also sure in Tony's mind, he sees this guy who just got into a stuff, scuffle coming out of him. He probably is a little bit worried. I think both are right in their own mindset. I completely sympathize with Tony. And I think that Tony, if I was Tony Khan and I was standing there, and I see this guy just got into this argument and just had to be broken up and he's taking steps toward me. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried. I, I completely agree where Tony Khan is coming from with that. Yeah. But also, like, let's also not forget that Tony Khan, you know, owns a football team and a soccer team. So, like, he's probably pretty, you know, used to players, you know, going at it and stuff like that. But that also kind of speaks to, like, the level of, like, 
how crazy this kind of is, you know, like, so I, 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 I think that, you know, listen, I'm glad that they aired it. Yes. Because it, it confirmed a lot of what I was thinking, but also because like, if CM Punk's going to go around and saying, saying all this stuff, whether, whether he's right, whether he's accurate, inaccurate, whatever. And he was accurate when it came to a lot of what happened on that video, then, okay. I'm as a, as a fan of AEW, as a fan of the WWE, as a fan of most of everything we're talking about right now, I'm glad there's nothing really like that I have to speculate on anymore. Like we saw the footage. Okay. Like awesome. Like I know it. Now I know what happened and now people can choose, you know, it's, it's going to make people even more tribalistic, I guess, in certain ways towards punk or towards AEW or whatever. But at the end of the day, we don't have to keep speculating as to what happened. We see in the footage now. I'm glad that we did. So um, and now maybe everyone can just move on. Listen, I would, people aren't going to believe this. I would love if we, I didn't have to talk about CM Punk at all until it's like him back involved. He still kind of is with Drew. Like, I want to talk about him on the WWE screen. I think Drew McIntyre was the biggest winner in all this, actually. Um, the ammunition he's going to be getting for all of his stuff going forward. But, like, I would love nothing more than, like, after this conversation today, everything going forward is just about CM Punk on the WWE screen, what he's doing on the show. Like, I'm I'm over all this BS when it comes to all of this. This is You're cutting the same promo Dax and Cash cut last night because they, they just wanted to move on, right? I agree with them in a lot of ways. Okay. And I do think, yeah. again, they did a good job of trying to make this out into an angle with everything. I do agree with that. It could have moved. I understand CM Punk drudged some things up, but you people can move on by not addressing the situation. That is how you can move on, right? You could, but what's, I, I honestly. But now they're not going to move on from it though, because now they've introduced it as part of their storyline. They have. They've yeah, but they don't have to. It. But they don't have to re. But they don't have to refer to Punk ever again. They don't have to show this footage ever again. Like not, now, they don't have to now show the footage like... ever again. But you've now brought it up and you've made it part of your storyline canon. So when Jack Perry comes back, you don't think Jack Perry's getting CM Punk chance in this, Chicago tomorrow? Big time, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So when Jack Perry um, comes back, you're gonna get CM Punk chance. Are the Young Bucks gonna continue to get it? I don't know. But you've introduced this and made this part of your storyline. They have. There's yeah. no debating. Yeah, I uh, I don't necessarily. They have didn't a problem have to do that. that. I don't necessarily have a problem with that, though. Okay, but then you can't say, "Hey, let's everybody just move on. We can all move on from this." You're the ones who introduced this as part of your television show. CM Punk just did an interview. That's all. Tony Khan could have answered these same questions when he was asked by Helwani. He gave no comment. You introduced to, it as part of your television show. To, now that's that's the best point you've made about any of this, right there. Is that Tony Khan has had plenty of opportunities to give his side of the story and hasn't. And that would, that would have been better than just showing the footage would be him explaining his side of the story where he was coming from and actually answering questions in regard to it. And then potentially showing the footage to match what he's explaining. That it should have shown the footage when they fired him. It should have been like, look here. Here's here's the footage. I completely agree. But uh, wouldn't you rather see the footage now than never see it? Sure. But I wanted to see the footage because I just wanted the chaos. I didn't need to see it as part of the television show. But like where how like where else would they Like of course put, they would put it as a part of the show. Why? You put it like on YouTube and be like this is what happened? Yeah. It, why do you have to introduce right. it on television? Why do you have to introduce it as part of a storyline? Just be like, you know what? We heard CM Punk did an interview here. Here's what happened. Make up your own minds. It doesn't have to be part of the story at all. They made it part of the story. They made it on TV. Well, once again, I, I don't I don't personally have a problem with that at all. Yeah, leak like, it to TMZ. There you go. I mean, that would have been... Um, and I'm, look, actually surprised saying, that, I'm actually surprised that didn't happen. People are saying the ratings, the rate. I hope they get a good rating out of this, but I tweeted this yesterday and it's going to hold true. If they get a good rating, the, the comment's going to be, see, this is what they needed to do to get a good rating. If they don't get a good rating, everybody's going to be like, wow, they did all that and didn't get a good rating. And then everybody's just going to, if they pop a rating this week, everybody's gonna be like, well, okay, well, what's going to happen 
next week. Because next week you don't have We Got All In footage to air. And their show last night was a show. It was fine. It wasn't anything special. It was just a show. Now, what do you think about, because this ties in, what do you think about like Osprey's promo from last night? Looking forward to that Osprey and Triple H match. <laughs> Same kind of idea of like, why are you building towards something that you can't do? I don't understand taking, look, I'm all for the petty shots, by the way. I, I think I've made that very clear in the history of all of these doing, doing these shows. I'm all for it. When you do it on television, though, is when I got kind of a bigger issue with it. You want to do it? Look, it popped me. I thought it was funny, but I just don't see the point of it in it on doing on television. Everybody's like, well, Triple H and WWE did it first. Okay, Tony does shots all the time on Twitter and stuff. People do shots at interviews all the time. Triple H did in, in, in an interview. When I heard that, I didn't even think of Osprey. I was just like, oh, he's just kind of taking a shot at everybody. Yeah, that's how I felt too. Was like any pretty much anyone that they haven't like. I didn't specifically look at Osprey. I was thinking really anyone that I, I'm with you on that. I wasn't thinking him specifically when they said that. Yeah, but Osprey took it as, as that, and people took that as Osprey. It's like, okay, so Osprey responded. He congratulated Triple H on having sex and having a high paying job, and then he threatened to murder the man. Like, all right, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> like I'm, I'm fine if if Osprey does an interview and responds, I'm cool with that. Taking up television time to just do this is, you know what? CM Punk was right. CM Punk was right in that when he said you know, they're playing to just a niche audience and trying to get popping them. That's what this feels like. It feels like hey, let's just try to pop the people who are on the end on the internet by making these comments. And I don't think you should play to that audience. You should play to your television audience, your overall appeal of television. And not everyone understood all of this. Not, not every like, yeah, you're going to get a little pop out of things. But most people, I, I texted my friend, very casual, very nothing, very doesn't care about wrestling really at all. Texted him. I was like, they're airing the all in footage tonight on AEW. And he's like, what the hell is that? Yeah. Uh huh. What's the all-in footage? He watched WrestleMania. He'll, he'll he's watched AEW matches. He knows what AEW is. He watched Sting's last match. It was like they're airing the all-in footage. He's like, "What is that?" I was like, "The footage, the backstage footage." And he's like, "Oh, is that the CM Punk thing?" I was like, "Yeah." It's like, didn't this happen months ago? It's like, yeah, but they're airing it tonight. And then I showed it to him, and he's like, "Nothing really happened." It's like, yeah. Like that that's how a lot of people view this kind of stuff. It's not as big of a deal. We're in the we're in the bubble here. We're in the bubble. And they're mm -hmm. playing to the bubble. And I don't think they should. And see, like, I guess that's also a point of view that like I want to kind of make clear from my perspective too, is like I'm in the bubble and I don't really care about outside the bubble, if that makes sense. Like I understand that like AEW needs an audience to exist and all that stuff. But at the same time, I don't view AEW as like an actual competitor to the WWE. Like it's a totally different thing. They're all, they're almost are in two different businesses in a certain, in, in a lot of ways. So like for me, I'm just viewing this as like, I'm in the bubble. I wanted to see this footage. I'm really happy. I got to see this footage. I know all the backstory. So they were playing to me and I got what I wanted. Like, I'm not really that can like, I'm real. I'm not concerned about AEW's TV rating. I'm not concerned. Like I'm, I personally don't care about any of that. Okay. Did, did but, I think, but I think, but I think, but I think, but I think a lot of people spend a lot of their time caring about that and talking about how much they think other people need to like or not like certain things about wrestling or need to pop ratings here or there because they think that they know the wrestling business better than the actual companies do and all this kind of stuff. And it's like. I, I understand you need to grow your company and you, you do that with a casual audience more than just a hardcore niche bubble. But I'm in the I I'm in the bubble that understands what's going on. So why do I care if other people don't? I think the mythical casual fans and, and stuff is a little bit overblown. My issue is you're building stuff that you can't capitalize on. That's truly my biggest issue with this. I'm all for petty shots. By the way, again, I, I've said that you want to do interviews, you want to do tweets. That's hilarious to me. Absolutely hilarious. But you have television time to build pay-per-view matches, to build matches on the television show. 
build that stuff. Focus on that stuff. You can't deliver on a Triple H and Will Ospreay match. Right. You can't deliver on you can't deliver on a CM Punk match. When WWE does this, when they did it all last week, they did it in media stuff. AW wants to respond in media stuff. Fine by me. Do it. Please do it. Honestly, give me more stuff to talk about like that. Give me more stuff to write about like that. I hope you continue to do that kind of stuff. On television, though, the point of television is to sell the audience on the television product, to sell the audience on the matches that you can build, on the stories that you can build. You're building nothing with these. You're building on stuff that you can't deliver. And that's my problem with all of this. It's also an issue. I, I understand that point. Be it's a- also an issue when Adam Copeland comes out the week before and goes, rah, rah, AEW, we have the yeah. best wrestling. And your whole show is built around backstage footage of a fight from somebody who was isn't in the company anymore. That's an issue. Yeah. Too. So I, uh, I'm not, I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I, I, I think that, uh, so what was I going to say? Cause there was a lot there, but like, I actually agree. So like, I'll, I agree with everything you said. And I'll also one up that and agree with you even more actually where I'll, I'll, I'll say that like, I made my point with the, with the CM Punk and Jack Perry, but personal standpoint, I'm glad that they aired it. Now that said the Osprey, I feel like the Osprey interview came off cringe. You know what I mean? Like, and even for like Renee standing there with the microphone, you could tell she was uncomfortable because she, she likes a lot of the people over there. You know what I mean? Like, so that was also kind of like a weird. He's uncomfortable and then he burn. threatened to murder the man. Right. Well, it's <laughs> like, don't throw, don't throw stones at an assassin with a machine gun. I'm like, what? Yeah. I have a machine gun. Um, But what I really mean more is like the whole like grinding with the boss, with the boss's daughter line and all that stuff. Like, I just don't, I don't think that's like, I, that, that's a, I get that you never say never in wrestling and, <clears throat> and bridges have been burned. And then somehow like those people wound up being a part of it in the future and stuff. But like, I don't know why Will Ospreay would, would like even try to burn a bridge like that right now. Like the guy's still in his prime. He has, you know, a few years of this AEW contract. I think he'll absolutely kill it at AEW and he's going to have incredible matches, but like you never want to burn that bridge with the WWE in case you want to go there one day. And like triple H, they, I think, you know, he, if he was ever on the fence about the guy for any reason, now he sees that and he's like, Oh yeah, well, I'm not going to hire this dude. Like kidding me saying that kind of stuff about me. Like, I think ultimately people's talent and stuff winds up kind of like, trumping that in a lot of ways like if they're talented enough and over enough cm punk will put per- i mean sorry cm punk is C- uh, triple h c- kind of like with cm punk obviously there was a huge that bridge was super burned and they wound up bringing him back and then it happened with ultimate warrior and other people in the past too but like i just don't know why will osprey i mean maybe you do a little wink wink to like hey heard what you said but like i'm gonna prove you wrong but like you don't say all the stuff of like you don't get that specific with it i just think i thought that was kind of cringe and i'm all i'm a big osprey fan i just feel like you could have done without without that so i'll i'll agree with you on the stuff that you're saying about you know about i i can agree to a to a to a point with that if i'm wwe i'm taking more shots in these interviews like wait a second they're gonna take television time to address us over these stuff let's just keep doing it (laughs) Let's just keep taking these shots. And and I have no problem. I, do it. Like, and that's, and see, and here's, this is where I think some people that are in the chat that are probably newer to the show or like some of the stuff I've seen today, this might change your mind about me a little bit. Not that you necessarily have to. I think AEW, or sorry, I think WWE should do that. Like, I'm, I'm a huge AEW fan, but I'm also a huge fan of just professional wrestling and the professional wrestling industry. Like, and I'm really, really into the WWE right now for obvious reasons. So like I have, like if AEW is going to do this, I, I don't, I'm not sitting here saying WWE shouldn't shoot, take shots back or that like somebody else shouldn't keep taking shots or this shouldn't continue happening. Like, I think I, I know I said a moment ago that I think everyone should just kind of move on from the CM Punk stuff. And I think that that's probably the best idea for the most part, but like, to be fair, Drew McIntyre is going to use 
this on television. Um, just like Jack Perry's going to use it on television. Like, but there's going to be a lot of, I, I'm fine with WWE taking shots back and then AEW taking shots back and then going back and forth. As a, as a fan, that's fun. I love, dude, we grew up in the Monday Night Wars. Like, I'm not saying you're saying like the Attitude Era is back because in honesty, even though we lived through it, a lot of the Attitude Era stuff actually kind of sucked. When you, when you go back and you watch it, I think this, this current era of wrestling we're in right now is the best it's ever been with the accessibility, with having WWE, this global conglomerate that it has become, with AEW being like an actual alternative, not a not a true competitor in my opinion, but an alternative for another great wrestling show on mainstream television. You got GCW absolutely killing it almost every single weekend. You got Action Wrestling, SCI, West Coast Pro. You got, I mean, I can name a thousand any promotions on IWTV and Fight Plus, or sorry, Triller Plus now and all this stuff. We are living in the best time ever to be wrestling fans. So I don't want this to even sound like I'm tribalistic towards AEW. Like I am an AEW fan, but I'm also a WWE big fan. dick rider. That Steven Jensen. Oh, you froze right when you said that you said big oh, dick rider, but but on what uh, of AEW. Yeah. I'm such a, I'm such a dick rider that like I've prioritized GCW over AEW many times. Um, I prioritize watching action wrestling over AEW many times. You know what I mean? Like there's plenty of stuff that like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of all of this stuff. Um, people just, I know, I just, I'm not a, I am not a CM Punk fan when it comes to a lot of stuff and people know that. So, you know, and, and on the flip side, there are a lot of loyal diehard CM Punk fans. So this is just one thing that I disagree with, with y'all. Y'all disagree with, with me. It is what it is. It's like having a, uh, a favorite fighter or a favorite sports team or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm never going to see eye to eye with green Bay Packers fans. It's just not going to happen. You know what I mean? I'm a Vikings fan. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what they do. So like there's, there is an aspect to that a little bit. Right. But like outside of that, I'd probably agree. Anyone who's in this chat, like screw this guy, this guy's an idiot, blah, blah, blah. I probably agree with like every other take you have about professional wrestling, except for this one thing. You know what I mean? So it's just, you know, and that's, that's what makes this world great too, is there's a lot of people out there that I agree with like 95% of the stuff that they say and they do. And then there's like the 5% where I'm like, what the hell is this guy talking about? But just because of that 5% doesn't mean I hate that person. It's just this one thing that we disagree on, you know? So just, it just is what it is. But I think it, to your point, I think WWE should keep taking shots. I think, I think part of why Drew McIntyre is the most interesting person in the entire WWE is because of this that's- kind of stuff. That's who's going to make the most money off of this is Drew McIntyre. AEW did all of this. Yeah, so good, Drew good McIntyre for him. I love Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is the best. Like I, I agree. Of Cody, Drew McIntyre is my guy. I agree. But this is also the, the issue with doing all of this is Drew McIntyre is the one who's going to make the most money off of this. Good for him. Not AEW. Good for Drew. Especially if he's negotiating his deal right now, still <laughs> like good for him. Tri- Tribal Kev says the buzz feels like stuff Punk can use, not AW. Yes, Punk can use it. Drew McIntyre can use it. There's gonna be a backstage fight with Drew McIntyre next week on Raw. He's gonna he's gonna do something, and it's gonna build towards a match with CM Punk because that's the match that you can actually build is Drew McIntyre and CM Punk, and you can do your little inside nods like this. <laughs> Listen, I, I, <laughs> I can, I can, I can respect some, like some of these comments are funny. Listen, I'm not, I'm not bad when I'm not deep. I'm not bad when I'm not deep throating AEW. Listen, guys, come on, come on, y'all. Um, sorry, go ahead, Jerry. You, you, can, you, can, comments. you can do inside nods. You can do wink and joke. Both companies do that. Both companies do it very well. It's when you can build something off of it is when that stuff kind of works. You can't build anything off of this. You can't build a CM Punk match. You can't build a Triple H match. These aren't winking nods to, ah, I understood that reference. This is this is elements you're trying to introduce on your television show that are going nowhere. That's what they what are. If, what if this happened? Henry Bears with the chat that says, that it would be funny look- if Drew did this and dip before Punk could wrestle. Honestly, that would be hilarious. That'd be the tremendous, tremendous bit. Alexander, if it's Yeah, but that would completely would... contradict everything you just said. It would be all this on TV for nothing, for no payoff, for something you couldn't do. But it would be hilarious. Yeah, but I mean, they don't know that now. 
if Drew McIntyre is just going to leave, they're they're obviously hoping they're building this Drew McIntyre I, match. I'd imagine that they've got something figured out with him already. I would hope so. Alexander Fitzgerald says, I wish the footage was aired during the week Punk was fired. I saw, saw a video of someone at Dynamite. It went from Punk Chance to thank you, Jack Chance. Apparently, OJ okay. Simpson died as well. Oh, is that real? I mean, I'm going to trust the, the source of the chat. And I don't want to sound like I'm like super disappointed about that either. Like, I mean, that was yeah, the, but... OJ, OJ Simpson's official Twitter on our, on April 10th, our father or James Simpson succumbed to his battle with cancer. Okay. Listen, I don't like hearing about anybody having to deal with cancer. All right. That always hits a nerve with me, but like, I mean, let's not kid ourselves about what happened there. This so. is from this is from Wade Keller at the PW Torch. So take wh- however much you trust anybody who is anybody. This is I'm just naming the source here. I've been checking with people in AEW and I've been told that this was not something the Bucks were in favor of doing. It wasn't their idea. It was Tony Khan's idea that he wanted this out there. They also had Will Ospreay go on camera, interviewed by Renee Paquette. The first part of his promo was him addressing a comment that Triple H said on a podcast that was alluding to Will Ospreay being someone who didn't want to be part of the grind. Keller said the promo was not Ospreay's idea. I'm told this was an idea presented to Ospreay. I don't know about Ospreay's enthusiasm for or against it, but it wasn't something he did on his own. He didn't wing it. It was something that hours before the interview took place, it was proposed to him. Okay. So now is where I think a lot of people who hate me about what I said about CM Punk are going to start agreeing with me about some stuff. Okay. Um, there are a lot of people that see AEW as Bush League, regardless of any of this stuff we're talking about right now. And then when you add this onto it, it just makes them look worse and worse and worse. Admittedly, my brother is one of these people. He trolls AEW massively. Because he thinks WWE is way up here, AEW is way down here. Like, and so anytime AEW does something, he's just like, it's petty, it's stupid, it doesn't matter. It's the minor leagues, it's Bush League. Like that's, and I think he, I think a lot of a lot of people see it that way. Um, remember during, I think it was actually, which pre- you'll you'll probably know better than me. There was a press conference that AEW did. It was one of it was the press conference that one of these brawls happened. I think it was the brawl out press conference. I think was the same weekend that WWE counter had recently counter programmed AEW or something. I want to say, and the only reason I remember this is because I remember Tony answering some sort of question during the the conference, and he was he got really fired up. He was like, "Yeah, that was that was all out. That was Clash at the Castle was that weekend. There was an NXT show." That weekend, I believe that was a busy, busy weekend. And remember yeah, how, was, remember he got really he got fired, fired up and he was like, I'm not going to put up with this shit. I'm not going to let people step on me. I'm not going to let people do this to us. Like I'm tired of this shit and I'm fighting. This was back. after, yes, this was after CM Punk's whole thing too. Right. But so in, on one sense, <laughs> I think that's admirable. Cause it's like, you're not taking shit. You're not going to just sit down and take it. Like you're going to fight back. But at the same time, it does show a little, glimpse of like and i hate to say this because i am an AEW fan it's almost like a but who like who do you think you are because like if if your if your mindset is like that you're gonna actually be able to like take down I, i'm not saying like take down the WWE as far as like put WWE out of business but like there's pretty much nothing you can do as a company in this stuff with cm punk unfortunately proves it like, there's nothing you can really do to change the perception of like the overall wrestling world if, if this makes sense as far as like if 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 wwe takes a certain shot at AEW, if your if your mindset is always like i'm gonna get them back i'm gonna hit them back i'm gonna hit them back i'm gonna hit them back but like every time you swing it doesn't land people are like you just look pathetic right and, and- that's and that's what i think people are that's what I want to avoid as an AEW fan is like Tony Khan fighting battles that he just has no chance of winning. If that makes sense. It's very lose, lose when you are the the number two company and there's no real great shot at being number one, because if you do address it, yeah, people are like, Oh, look, gotten to type of thing. If you don't address it, it's like, Oh, why didn't they, they fight back? This is what I think you could do it in the media. 
I think you can address this stuff. You're in right. Interviews. You're right. But Tony doesn't that. want to do that. Tony you're wants right. to know comment yeah, everything. You're right. With WWE takes their shots in the media. AEW can take their shots in the media, but there's also the point of you know AEW. Tony Tony's online. He'll tweet. He'll tweet. He'll take his shots on Twitter, and then people are still like, "Oh, what are you doing? All of this for why? Are, why are you doing all this?" I, see, I think that's hilarious, and this is where I just think people are just they're going to be tribalistic and they're just going to hate everything AEW and Tony Khan does anyway. I I have no issue with Tony when he tweets and and stuff like that. I got no issue if people want to comment in interviews. Again, I'm. I hope I've made that very clear. You want to do all this stuff on Twitter. You want to do all this stuff on interviews. Good. Please do. Gives me something to write about every single day. Not that I don't have enough anyway, but it gives me something to to talk about when it comes on this. Do we get on television time? I just don't think that's a valuable use of the television time. If you can't build any of this and triple H wasn't saying everybody here. It wants to be here. Everybody over there is running from the grind. CM Punk isn't doing his whole spiel, his whole side of the story on television. He'll make references to things, maybe on television, but it's that's fine. Like it's a commentary line. I don't even know if he's even referenced like AEW kind of stuff. I guess he did the who goes around punching people backstage, but he worked that into a, something about Kevin Owens. So again, you want to do wink and nod references like that to where you can actually work it into something that's happening on your television show. Cool. I'm okay with that. And that's why the, the all in footage, they tried to work it into the television show to, to do this storyline. Okay. Was that the best use? I don't think so. It kind of backfired. They were chanting for CM Punk, but I understand why they wanted to do it, how they presented it. Again, I hope I'm making this very clear is it's not so much the taking shots back and forth. It's the usage of how they do this stuff. I, I, I mean, I think you're making good points. Um, I've, I've at, at the end of the day, the show, where you been? Uh, I've been agreeing with a lot of stuff you're saying. I disagree with some of it. Again, some of it, I know you're trolling to, and this is factual reactions. by the way. And, and this is AW won't win. That's over a good, that's a great WWE point by the area there. That is. And that's why point. I don't see the point of read, read it out for people who are on audio. Just so people know what you're talking about real quick. Henry said, AW will never win over WWE fans. That's a pretty, I mean, like you're going to get some of them, but a lot of them are just, are going to spend, are never going to give AW just the time of day regardless. And that's why I don't see the point of especially doing this stuff on the television show. Just focus on your own show. Focus on your own product because what you have is very good. They've been doing great shows this year. You know, this reset with everything has been very good. I've really enjoyed the AEW product for the most part this year. There's been some stuff I'm like, eh, no, don't like it. But for the most part, it's been great. And that's what I would like to focus to be on because this is what happens and this is what I truthfully hate. And maybe we should be better than this is we spend our whole show, whole show talking about this. And this is what every single person who has a podcast and who does, has a Twitter and who has a platform. This is all they're talking about today is the CM Punk footage. No one's talking about Mariah May and Anna J. No one's talking about the Samoa Joe swerve angle. Everyone's focused on the CM Punk footage. And they did that because they decided to air that footage and they didn't have to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of torn on all of it. Right. Cause like, I do think that there are a lot of WWE fans that, that, that would want to watch AEW that would want to give it a shot. But also like, we have to also keep in mind when AEW came around, WWE was really bad. Like it really was like in those years when AEW came around. So like a and lot so, of the fan base was looking for something different. You know what I yes. mean? And that this is an issue that it's been addressed. It's been talked about, but this honestly, the thank you, triple H stuff, the advantages AEW used to have, they don't anymore. They used to have the advantage of, Oh, WWE creative sucks. Oh, yeah. There's so many restrictions in WWE. You you you're way, you get more way more freedom. It's way looser. You can take your outside projects. You can take your independent bookings. You can do all of this stuff in AEW. Those advantages are way less nowadays because there's 
they have the freedom now in WWE. You can't take indie bookings like you can in AEW, but look, we saw Charlie Dempsey. We saw Shayna Baszler. We've seen people appear on some indie shows. The freedom, they ain't scripting every single line and every single promo. There's more wrestling. It's still, I know fans are like, hey, we we still want even more wrestling on our WWE shows. But the, the restrictions just aren't, aren't as there as much in WWE. WWE product doesn't suck right now. That was a big selling point for a lot of people in AEW. Was, uh, why would we go there? We're just going to get handcuffed. We're going to get neutered over there. That's not there anymore. And WWE still has the same advantages they had before, which is millions of people watch WWE. The big stage, the big production, the big lights, everything about that is still there with WWE. Yeah, I, I mean, you're you're right about all that. I mean, it's uh it's tough because like AEW still is is a new company too, which we need to also keep in mind, right? Like, they're only like five years old. They're doing incredible. They're doing incredible for where they're at. I mean, like, they're they're at a bigger level than you know TNA slash Impact ever was, and they've been around for a long time. Even when they were at their hottest it didn't have the same kind of buzz and it didn't feel like the same kind of level of like what AEW is doing. So like AEW in the grand scheme of things is still doing fantastic. I think what I think they need to do going forward is, I mean, I would do, like, what do you, would you agree with this at this point? They just really just need to just their tagline, you know, being we're the best wrestle, like just, just put on, just put the, just put on the bet, just put on banger matches, just focus on, yeah. focus on stories, put on banger matches and just try to get that audience that wants to see Danielson, that wants to see Osprey, that wants to see Omega when he's back. And like, just, just focus, just, you know what I mean? Just focus on that and just let the wrestling speak for itself. That's, that's what I said. Yeah. yeah that's why it didn't, yeah. it was, con- it was counteractive, contradictory to have Adam Edge do his big rah rah promo last week of like, we're the best wrestle. This is where professional wrestling lives. Thank God for AEW. And then this week, you build your whole show around a backstage fight footage involving a guy that isn't in the company anymore. Yeah, just do good wrestling matches and tell good stories. Focus on your own product. Again, you want to do wink and nod stuff? All for it. Both companies should do that. You want to take sly little shots that can build something in your company. Good. And CM Punk, when he was there, he all of his promos were based on that. Eddie Kingston, John Moxley, a lot of that work was based on sly nods and winking and, you know, wink shots mm-hmm. there. But they were building towards matches with each other. You're not building anything with this stuff. There's not. Yeah. It's a real, it's a real shame at the end of the day that, uh, especially when it came to the elite and uh, punk and all that stuff that like, given that, you know, what happened happened and they were at where, where they were at, but like, it's a real shame that, that they couldn't capitalize on television at all with that. Like with like, you know, them having actual matches and stuff like that and like really pay that off. It's a humongous miss. And that's where like, once again, I'll make it clear. I, don't agree with CM Punk's way of dealing with things. I don't think that the best way of handling stuff is going zero to a hundred, getting in people's faces and, and, and confronting people and, and shoving them in that kind of stuff. I don't agree with that, but I will agree that as a boss, Tony Khan should have figured a way to handle the situation long before it got to that point. And that didn't happen. And now, and now we're at where we're at, you know, once again, I'm glad we saw the footage. I wanted to see it. We finally seen it. It confirmed a lot of what I already thought. And like I'm good with moving on from that now. You know what I mean? And I know like you're saying, but a lot of it, we kind of won't because people are going to keep chanting CM Punk. It's going to be brought into the Jack Perry situation. It's going to be brought into the Drew McIntyre story and that kind of stuff. But like, I mean, as an AEW fan, I would, I, I would like them to just put on banger matches for sure. You know, I'd like it to be more of that focus. That was the focus when I, when AEW started, when I started watching the, the show day one and everything, it was like, you know, just, putting together indie dream matches basically and then letting the whole world see them, you know, in front of millions of people on, on the Turner network. So it was giving exposure to all these wrestlers that, that weren't going to ever get a shot in the WWE. Um, and now it's becoming this dick measuring contest between the people who run the companies and the, the performers involved. And, you know, it is what it is, what it is but 
I agree. I agree with a lot of what you're saying though, Jeremy, I really do. I think that AEW should at this point, now that this is all done and over with and where we're at, they should just focus on having the best matches, put on the best pay-per-views that they possibly can and just get pro wrestling fans to get invested that way. JJ says, Tony Schiavone, what's he thinking? Feel his pain. Yeah. I know a lot of people have posted the, the photo of Tony Schiavone and he looked like he wanted nothing to do with any of this. Like, Tony Schiavone's lived through this yeah oh, he famously geez. gave the butts and seats line so <laughs> yeah yeah that's got to be that's got to be a trip for some of these guys because that was also was kind of interesting about it we don't need to like reopen these wounds here because i think we've done a pretty good job kind of talking through most of it but like the uh like initially it seemed like after punk did that interview with helwani that like tony Schiavone was basically just no commenting it Eddie Kingston was like, I don't know how I feel about the guy. Like, I'm not talking yeah, about Yeah, Eddie it. Like, Kingston, that, that's what they should have done, is they should have sent Eddie Kingston out there last week and this week. But like, it doesn't work here. Who gives a fuck what he has to say? Yeah, I told you guys yeah. all this before he showed up and while he was here to his face, and now we're, now we're at, you know? See, Eddie Kingston um, had the best comment. One, it was in the media. Uh, shout out to uh, my guy, Adrian Hernandez, as well. He did the interview, Eddie Kingston. He, he, he uh, brought up CM Punk. But Eddie Kingston was like, I don't care what he has to say. He does not work here. Eddie Kingston can't build a CM Punk fight right now, so he shouldn't care. Yeah. Listen, I I I, I see that line of thinking too, of just like just being the everyone just being the bigger people just on both sides and just moving on from this. But I don't blame AEW for running the footage coming off of that interview. I don't, I don't blame them for that, but I, I listen, I get why there's people who don't like that. They did it. I get why people think it's counterproductive and all this stuff. I, I understand, but you know, we're at, we're at, where we're at now. They showed it and it's, it's done with, I hope at the very least when Jack Perry comes back, he's like massively over to some, you know, I think he's got a lot of talent. I've, I've liked Jack Perry a lot. Um, and I think he's, he's a big get, asset to AEW. So he's gonna get CM Punk chance on Friday. Big time. Well, is he when are they in Chicago? Is that is that yeah, Friday? In Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's gonna be, but once again, I mean, that's that's kind of awesome, right? Like as a wrestling fan, whether you like Jack Perry or you hate Jack Perry, like as a fan, don't you want to tune in and just see what that looks like and what that sounds like? That's interesting to me, whether you like him or you hate him. I mean, I'm, I, I tune in regardless. So no, I'm not. I'm saying like yeah, anyone who's like like who's watching right. this right now, like any any wrestling fan, you know, even if you, if you it's kind of a win win. It feels like it from that sense. Like if you love the guy, it's like oh wow, let's see what happens here. Like finally, this guy's gonna you know kind of stick it to to CM Punk through this or something. And then like the other way you look at it is like screw Jack Perry. This guy sucks. I'm gonna watch him get booed out of the building. You know what I mean? Like kind of a win win from that sense. We've already gone two and a half hours on this show. Anything else you would like to talk about? Um, hmm. Is there anything? Oh, he's got a super chat. Pull we'll that up. Dynamite has been solid the past few weeks and felt like they were on the right track moving forward, but then they bring this up again. The footage overshadowed the show. Penta Copeland was good. Yeah. I, I said footage as much. overshadowed the show. Yep. Yeah, like they have been doing good shows. And now, unfortunately, this is what everyone's going to be talking about and it didn't have to be this way they didn't have to make this the talking point it's wild and it's kind of ironic too because of like how many times punk did that to them where like you know punk was MJF, always the talking point but, but it was like even we were like mjf like like when punk won the title the talking point was brawl out when mjf returned the talking point was was cm punk when CM um punk? All, well and all in happens biggest show of all time cm punk you know what i mean it's wild they they made him talking points on this one and they didn't have to. They did. They, they really, they didn't have to. But oh, I was going to say one more thing. Oh, I hope they get a good rating out of this. I truly, yeah. truly do. I hope people saw the show. They found something they liked out of it and they continue to stick around. But again, I'm, I'll retweet it because so I don't have to waste my own time. If they get a good rating, it's going to be C, CM Punk boosted it. If they didn't get a good rating, Wow, they did all that and still couldn't pop a rating. It was, it was a no-win situation to do this. Well, no I think, I think it, um, I think it also is going to matter massively, right? When it comes to like, 
like when you see the rating pop, how much does it fall off throughout the rest of the show after that? Yeah, the quarters. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the real thing is like, did the, does it pop? And then everybody tuned out afterwards or does it pop? And then like a good amount of those people actually stayed and watched the rest of the show. That's really going to be the, the real indicator of like, whether or not this was like a giant mistake or not, I feel like. Cause it, cause if it just pops and then like everyone tunes out, it's like, boom, boom. Everyone's going to be like, Oh, that's not a good look. You know, the Dave, the, uh, I do think that the Jericho match was next. It was the, the video FTR going off script and coming out. They were not in the rundown. Uh, and then it was like the Osprey promo. And then I think it was the Jericho match. I'll double check the, the actual results here. Um, but I, feel like that was the way it went yeah it was yeah the uh the footage aired ftr did a promo osprey did a promo then it was the jericho match so that was the order of things then they probably should have done the footage maybe ftr saying something real quick or maybe wait till a little later on the show to do that and like right after that footage they should have they should have aired like you know i don't know daniel you know danielson versus osprey level something you know i know that's coming up but you know what i mean like have one of those two like have like they should just put on like a banger match right after that footage i think and then maybe hooked people that like maybe wouldn't have stayed especially if it was like danielson or somebody that they recognize you know from the wwe well i think i think that was the point of jericho is right oh, chris jericho is out here and they did do a promo before they aired the footage to kind of let everybody know which is good you should build up what you're doing later in the show with these little backstage promos um but I think that was the point of Jericho is like, Oh, Chris Jericho is, is next after all of this. <clears throat> yeah. So I know we've gone through a lot today in the, uh, on the show went through a, a large uh, roller coaster of emotions. Glad that uh, the people in this chat for the most part, were pretty, were pretty cordial. Even if you disagreed, as long as you didn't take it too far, I'm pretty sure most of your comments didn't get like banned or deleted. I have nothing to do with that, by the way, I don't, I don't moderate the chat or anything um well, your comment but, got banned or deleted you were probably being an asshole and i, I know drew and jj are here they're mods i trust what they're doing there so oh you know about if they were being an asshole in the chat or me. yeah oh i thought you were talking about me i was like i don't think i said anything that crazy i, I mean i, I completely defend. destroyed you this episode yeah. you you were shook beyond all control during the cody segment and the punk stuff so. no it was mainly the having <laughs> having to identify that cody rhodes is a baby face like that seems ridiculous to me to have to defend that but outside of that i think that uh uh jj says it's a safe space only a few got deleted yeah i mean and even the ones if i don't i i'm not too soft when it comes to that kind of stuff unless someone's not like attacking my family i don't really care what people are saying about me to be honest i i just hope that at the end of the day that like <laughs> I hope that people understand and that I look at it this way. We all love professional wrestling. If, if you, if you're watching a show like this, whether you like me or you don't like you, you like professional wrestling because you're spending your time. Except for Jeremy, he pretends not to like it, even though it's his full-time job and he worked his whole life to be in this kind of position. But I think that at the end of the day, like, I have some opinions you might disagree with. You might have some opinions that I disagree with. I want, as I would hope everyone watching this too would want, I want just wrestling in general, like I said before, to just to be there, to be thriving, to be successful. I think that AEW being around makes WWE better and it makes it better for the wrestlers to have the options and to make more money and all that kind of stuff. I think the indie scene has never been in a better space than it's been right now. And I cover indie wrestling for Fightful. I've been it for over five years over on Fightful Select with The Weekender. I love independent professional wrestling. It's in the best place it's ever been. Um, it's totally fine to not see eye to eye when it comes to everything, when it comes to wrestling. Totally fine. People get in their own heads, myself included, about fantasy booking stuff, hoping things happen. Certain people get pushed. Certain wrestlers go to certain companies, have these dream matches. In a perfect world, you know, like we all have our own ideas of what would make wrestling the best. Um, but just keep in mind that at the end of the day, we're all we're all wrestling fans, and we all really the tribalism stuff kills me because like 
to be a wrestling fan, you're already like the niche of the niche when it comes to like your fandom of something, right? Like how many people in this chat throughout your life, when you brought up that you're a wrestling fan, you were told, don't you know it's fake or, you know, this is stupid. You're an idiot for watching this or you're wasting your time or whatever. And, you know, a lot of people probably didn't want to admit to be a wrestling fan when they were growing up and stuff because they didn't want to be made fun of. It was embarrassing and all this stuff. And that's a big reason why I think we all get so attached to it because we all have our own personal attachment to it. And we want it to be our favorite thing. Um, just keep in mind that everybody's in that boat. Everybody who's a wrestling fan, we, we all love wrestling and we all want it to be successful. And we want to like watch the wrestling that we like. We want it to be there. So like, whether you agree with me or disagree with me about any of this stuff, there's really nothing you can say to me that like at the end of the day, I'll look at it. And even if you say the worst thing to me that possible, I'll still view it as like this person saying this because they love wrestling. They love wrestling so much. They are that passionate about wrestling that they are, they're that fired up over what I'm saying or whatever that like they, and I, and so I just want you guys to know that I, I appreciate comments, whether they're negative or positive, as long as they're not like an actual threat to like me or my family. That's all, that's all. That's my line, basically. Like, like what you like in wrestling. Don't watch what you don't want to watch. Support what you want to support. Don't support what you want to support. But at the, end, at the end of the day, it's pretty awesome that we have any kind of forum that we can even do this kind of stuff. When we were growing up, we didn't have YouTube. Like, we had YouTube once we were in college. And even then, that was the, the YWC, and that was a much different place. And that was ultra toxic back then. That was way more toxic than it is now. People don't even realize that. Um, so, like... I just want everyone to realize that. And, and once again, whether you agree with me or you disagree with me, I appreciate that you have tuned into the show. And I hope that you guys, you know, if this is the first time you've seen this show, I hope that you guys watch in future episodes. We're always here at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time every single Thursday. We normally go for an hour and a half live. And then I normally clock in for my shoot job. That's how much I love you guys, positive or negative. I took off work today from my shoot job so that we could go along today and talk about all this stuff because I knew it was important. Uh, to not have a time constraint. So um, we're here every Thursday and we normally have an interview for you guys too. We interviewed Teal Rhodes last episode. If you want her thoughts before Cody won the championship, we interview a lot of independent professional wrestlers, a lot of promoters, a lot of other fans, YouTube creators and that kind of stuff. Um, so even if you saw me for the first time, you're like, fuck this guy. He hates CM Punk. Fuck him. I never want to see him again. There's probably a lot of stuff you, you would actually agree with me on that. Like we'll talk about every other week of the year. You know what I mean? So um so I just want to say that before we got out of here. I appreciate doing the show. I tell Jeremy all the time. I I've told him many times. I'm I'm desperately, I'm terrified of this show getting canceled every week. Every week I think the show is going to get canceled. I think this is going to be the last episode of the spotlight every single week that we do it. I'm not even exaggerating about that. So I appreciate everybody's support, whether positive or negative. If you want to leave a comment underneath this video, let me know how you feel and how you think. Once again, the line, the line is threatening me or my family. Anything else is fair game. As far as I'm concerned, as long as you, as long as you love pro wrestling, you're good in my book. Thank you, Triple H. Yeah. Thank you, Triple H. Thank you for creating professional wrestling for me. Do you want to plug anything? Follow me on Twitter at fight talk underscore use code fight talk and independent wrestling <laughs> Um, it lets IWTV know that I've sent you their way if you use that code. Um, support independent professional wrestling. I want to stress that. Like, not just IWTV, but, like, independent wrestling in general. We didn't even talk about the collective today, but I did a full collective review over on the Fightful Select Weekender podcast. I've been doing that show for over five years over on FightfulSelect.com. Um, so if you want a full recap of the entire GCW collective, I also talked about uh, Sean Ross Sapp's appearance managing Shaza McKenzie against Notorious Mimi. Talked about that on the show as well. Um, so if you want more indie talk and all that stuff, go over to the Fightful Select Weekender podcast. I think you'll really enjoy the show. I do it every week. Um, and uh, it's like five, it's five bucks a month for that tier. But you get my show, you get other shows, you get um you know all the news from sean and all that stuff too from Corey, all these people breaking news on select now so yeah check it out fightfulselect.com and uh yeah as i said before the the main plug would be you know if you if you like this show please keep watching we're on we're on early in the morning uh we're the earliest show that runs here on the platform um and we are once a week here on thursdays 8 30 a.m eastern time so if you can't join us live i always appreciate you guys watching on demand and I love getting uh, tweets from you guys and messages and everything. People saying, Hey, I watched the show. I like this. I didn't like this, whatever. Just keep being a wrestling fan. That's what's important. 
Guys, head over to FightfulSelect.com. Got a bunch of news, scoops, all that fun stuff over there. Listen to The Weekender uh, from, from Jensen, recapping all the GCW collective shows, everything else from independent wrestling. Just so y'all know, next weekend, I'm going to cover a lot of the stuff. Like, cause like GCW collective was 11 shows. So like, um, I'll, I'll catch up on like, I watched action. Dean was like one of my favorite shows of the entire weekend. That was on IWTV. I'll talk about that on the weekend or this week. Hey, Tony Khan actually brought up action Dean in his post, uh, in the press conference for ring of honor. He said he was bummed. He had to miss the show because of his work schedule. He wanted to go. Um, but, uh, but I'll talk about like that. I'll talk about ICW and HB and all the other stuff, you know, which, uh, I, I, I cover the NWA sometimes I cover MLW, I cover, uh, uh, NXT level up. So it'll be, I'll catch up on stuff that I missed this past week because of the collective on this next episode of the weekender for you guys. So I just want to let you guys know that too. All that on FIFO select, uh, again, all the news, all that fun stuff. Uh, you can go to fightfulrebook.com bunch of different stuff new episode new episode of new japan bread club is up new episode of indeed is up wrestling made me cry will be on sunday um coexisting with rob and maggie that's on fridays at 3 p.m eastern and then in the weeds myself and joel 10 a.m every monday wednesday friday we got interviews with uh mustafa ali tna x division champion he was on the show on monday and we had matt mikowski on the show yesterday both those were, were really fun interviews so you can check those out. I don't think there's anything else to plug. If there is, I apologize. Keep watching the show. Keep supporting. We appreciate it. It's nice to go long and argue with you a little bit today. Yeah, so. that was fun. I know. And I know, by the way, for people who like actually think like I was getting a little irritated at Jeremy a little bit there. I was. I, I All right. Let that. me, let me, let me, but, let me. <laughs> but I know what he's doing and we've been doing this a long time together. So I, I expect these things, but. I actually got a message from somebody in the middle of this show. I don't know who this this person is. Um, it, was, it actually went to my like uh, unrequested messages, mm -hmm. whatever you call those, uh, you know, from people you don't know. And it just says, "Brother, your way to make everything funny and not so serious is appreciated to the highest degree." Whether it's WWE or AW, every week, month, year, someone will always be mad, dramatic about something. I appreciate you just watching, appreciate the shows, and making people laugh. Thank you. So I, I hope people. Who said that? I have no <laughs> idea. Okay, I, I gotta know. send. I gotta send hey, no, a gift box or something. I'm but. I'm glad. I'm glad that somebody is watching the show and they're passionate enough about it to reach out to you about that. That's cool. And the last thing that I'll say once again, no hard feelings between me and Jeremy. I know he's. I know what he's doing, but. They, uh, I do want to say, last thing I'll say before I get out of here, once again, I know, th thank you, Triple H. Thank you, Triple and H. And yes. thank you, uh, and, and congratulations to Cody Rhodes, the WWE Heavyweight Champion. I, I hope people don't take me too seriously. Like, I have serious opinions about things, but I argue, or I'm passionate because it is wrestling and it is something that I've covered or watched for a good chunk of my life, but I don't care about a lot of these things. I don't have the attachment that a lot of people have. And that is why I do appreciate doing this show with Jensen. And when Cody won, I did not care so much that Cody won. Cool, awesome, was the right booking decision, in my opinion. I was more excited that Steven Jensen got his moment and all the Cody crybabies got their moment. That is what I cared about. More. I did have more people reach out to me about this than like the, the like that wish me happy birthday every year. So that was that was a nice gesture, everybody. That uh, so many people thought of me. It's wild how many people messaged me and they said you're the first person I thought about when Cody won. And I'm like, that's that makes sense. Uh, yeah, that that's pretty that's pretty cool. It's all it's almost like I became the WWE champion that day. You know what I mean? I appreciate you, Jensen, and uh, I think I can only close with one thing. Thank you, Triple H. Bye, everybody.